To accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream. Not only plan, but also believe. I request Professor Yasman. On behalf of Department of Mathematics and Statistics, I, Madhu Dadwal, feel deeply honored to welcome the Chief Guest Professor S.P. Bansal, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla, and Central University of Himachal Pradesh. Our special guest, Professor J.R. Gupta, former DS and Professor of our Mathematics Department. Professor Jyoti Prakash, Chairman, Department of Mathematics and Statistics. Professor Yoginder Singh Dhiman, Convener of the conference. Professor Khem Chan, the organizing secretary, all the professors who have served the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, HPU Shimla, Dean of Studies, DSW, Chief Warden, Chairman of various departments, directors of various institutes, invited guests from the various universities, delegates, faculty members, and dear students. In the inaugural session of the International Conference of Recent Advances in Mathematical Sciences. We are indeed delighted and honored by your presence on this significant day. In this conference, we are organizing first Professor M.B. Banerjee Memorial Lecture on his birth anniversary to be delivered by Professor J.R. Gupta and it is our privilege that he has spared his valuable time for this occasion. As we know, light is a symbol of brightness and prosperity as sunlight expels the darkness of night. Similarly, blessings bring in our life prosperity and happiness. So let us start this inaugural session with great enthusiasm by taking the blessings of Ma Saraswati. I request our esteemed Chief Guest, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor S.P. Bansal Sir, to kindle the auspicious lamp to embark on today's proceedings and inviting all the dignitaries on the stage to accompany our worthy Chief Guest.
Yes, last week. <laughs> Now I would like to request everyone to stand for Kulgi. Thank you. 
Now I invite the research scholars of the department to pin up the badges to all the dignitaries on the dais. Invited speakers, former professors and faculty members. Thank you, students. To make this moment, uh, occasion more memorable, I would be glad to request Professor Jyoti Prakash to felicitate our worthy chief guest, Honorable Vice Chancellor, by presenting him a bouquet. shawl, topi and memento as a token of love and respect. Now I request Professor Joginder Singh Dhiman, convener, to finally state our teacher and professor, Professor J.R. Gupta sir, by presenting him a bouquet, shawl, topi and memento as a token of love and respect.
Thank you, sir. Now I will request Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to felicitate our teachers who have served in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics at Ushimla. And I would like to invite our respected teachers on stage, Professor Shitikot, sir. <laughs> Professor Arji Shandil, sir. Professor Askit, all the professors. Professor Arpi Sharma, sir. Askit Gupta, sir. Professor Arpi Sharma, sir. Professor Bina Sharma, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um. Now I request Professor Jyoti Prakash sir to honor our worthy chief guest, honor Vice Chancellor, by presenting him a memento as a token of love and respect. I also request Professor Jolinda Singh Diman sir to honor our special guest Professor Jair Gupta sir with memento. <laughs> A true welcome is never complete without warm words and warm gestures. So I request Professor Jyoti Prakash sir, Chairman of our department, to accord a formal welcome. Professor S.P. Bansalji, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla, Chief Guest of the inaugural session of the International Conference, Professor Jair Gupta ji, 
keynote speaker of the first professor mb banerjee memorial lecture professor js diman convener of the conference professor mb banerjee uh, sorry professor khemchand organizing secretary of the conference our respected teachers who have taught us and uh, retired from the department of mathematics professor sirkot ji professor s k gupta ji professor r g sandil ji professor r p sharma ji professor mrs vina sharma ji deans directors chairpersons invited speakers from different fields of mathematics from india and abroad other faculty members of the university faculty members of the department participants from different parts of the country non teaching staff other guests media persons and dear students first of all on behalf of our department i welcome professor s p bansal ji honorable vice chancellor in the inaugural session of the conference who has spared his valuable time for us uh, sir do universities ke vice chancellor hain central university of uh, hp dharmshala aur uh, hp university shimla to itni byast apni uh, paricharcha ke baad bawajood bhi hamare liye samay nikalte hain pura samay nikalte hain main sir ka dil se aabhar vyakt karta hu I also welcome Professor Jair Gupta ji, Dean Planning, Professor Arvind Bhatt ji, deans of different faculties, chairpersons, invited speakers, our our other special guests, faculty members, participants, and students to grace the. inaugural session of international conference it's my privilege to present a brief history of our department and its growth and achievements attained in the course of time the department department of mathematics and statistics was established in the year 1970 as the main department of himachal pradesh university under the dynamic leadership of padam bhushan professor p l bhatnagar ji under his leadership and visionary approach the department attracted young brilliant talent and all these teachers contributed a lot in academic and research fronts earning national and international recognitions over the years the department has attained many heights in the academic, academic world Professor M B Banerjee was awarded the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award for Science and Technology in Mathematical Sciences in the year 1988 the highest award in science in India Professor S N Dubey Professor M B Banerjee and Professor R C Sharma have been conferred the fellowship of National Academy of Sciences teachers from the department have also shouldered the administrative responsibilities of the university professor p l bhatnagar and professor j r gupta were dean of studies presently also many faculty members are holding important administrative positions in the university the department is offering msc mathematics and phd mathematics degree programs the department has also started post graduate diploma in ancient indian mathematics and certificate course in vedic mathematics under the center for indian mathematics from the session 2021-22 over the years more than 125 students have completed their phd degree from the department the faculty members are dedicated working in the research areas of continuum mechanics algebra matrix analysis and cryptography 
in recognition of the quality of the research work and other academic activities department has been awarded special assistant program sap by ugc at the drs 1 level from the years 2009 to 2014 and drs 2 level from the years 2015 to 2020 the department aims to enhance excellence in the fields of research and academics the international conference is aimed to bring together the experts researchers and students working on the diverse areas of mathematics and its allied fields in order to discuss high level scientific questions exchange ideas and knowledge on different areas of specializations the conference proceedings consisting of research papers presented during the conference will be published after completing the peer review process of the selected papers we hope that this conference will provide a platform for young researchers to interact with the pioneer pioneers in their respective fields and shall be benefited from the deliberations during the conference the department of mathematics and statistics once again welcome all the delegates to the queen of hills simla and has put the best of his efforts into the successful organization of this important event at at himachal pradesh university and hope that all the delegates will have comfortable stay during these two days thank you all jai hind jai himachal mm-hmm. now i take the privilege to request our honored chief guest and all the dignitaries on dais to release the sovereign of the conference thank you sir now i am delighted to take the opportunity to introduce the chief guest of the event professor sat prakash bansal he is currently the vice chancellor of central university of himachal pradesh with an additional charge of himachal vice chancellor of himachal pradesh university he had honored as the vice chancellor of himachal pradesh technical Uni- university indira gandhi university bhagat phool singh women's university and maharaja agarsen university he is also an eminent researcher with 90 research papers in international journals of repute and 24 books in his credit he successfully guided 21 phd students and he visited many countries around the world including france uk and usa he has many awards in his credit including lifetime achievement award 2015 in tourism education excellence by lyceum of philippines university manila and indian tourism and hospitality congress
it's a great honor for me to be here in this august gathering in a very important seminar on very important thematic area recent advances in mathematical sciences in fact i take this opportunity to offer my tribute of love and admiration towards the organizer in particular the chairperson of the department and pro vice chancellor i consider him still a pro vice chancellor because his res resignation is not accepted ah <laughs> uh, professor jyoti prakash ji and i consider today myself lucky on this very auspicious day of durgashtami ki mujhe aaj subhagya mila hai itne bade mahanubhav jinki contribution na keval is department ke liye balki pure vishwavidyalay ke liye pure desh ke liye aise professor j r gupta ji और हमारे सामने बैठे प्रोफेसर श्रीकोट जी प्रोफेसर एस के गुप्ता जी प्रोफेसर शांडिल जी प्रोफेसर आपी शर्मा जी प्रोफेसर वीना जी जो मैं ये नहीं समझता कि दे आर नॉट रिटायर्ड टीचर कभी रिटायर होता ही नहीं है जैसे मैथमेटिक्स को कहते हैं ना कि मैथमेटिक्स हमेशा जीना रहता है चाहे हम बहुत वर्षों पहले जाएं चाहे आज की बात करें तो आप जैसे लोगों ने जीना रखा है इसलिए मैं आप लोगों को सलाम करता हूं रियली फॉर योर ग्रेट कंट्रीब्यूशन फॉर द नेशन ऑन द डायस प्रोफेसर खेमचंद प्रोफेसर जोगिंदर धीमान हियर द डेलीगेट्स फ्रॉम द वेरियस पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री our deans of the university chairpersons scholars my lovely students ladies and gentlemen i always believe that when there is two sense of consecration or activity turn to worship and that that kind of worship i can see from the last one week in the university that every, almost every department is organizing uh, some activity and i really congratulate to dean tenning also to giving a grant to every department for this purpose and uh, actually when we talk about the mathematics the invention of mathematics is old as the civilization is we can say the newly baby born learn mathematics first then he come into contact with the mother learn the body languages of the mother i got a chance to be there framing and giving my contribution in the national education policy when the head office was there in bangalore in the nec office at that time i was a vice chancellor in the indira gandhi university rewadi and when we were discussing there then when even we were discussing about about the three language formula then it has come into notice that really mathematics is the basic discipline mother discipline of all all the disciplines and even mathematical we can say the mathematical chip is already inbuilt in the mind of each and every newly born baby in the indians i i, I have visited so many countries about 32 countries and i मैं जब भी व्हेन आई ट्राई टू इंटरेक्ट देयर विद द स्कॉलर्स 
विद वाइस चांसलर विद डायरेक्टर्स तो मैंने ये देखा कि वहां पर जितने भी इंडियंस हैं दे आर वेरी गुड इन क्वांटिटेटिव और इवन इवन उनका रिमार्क्स भी यही था वहां के डायरेक्टर्स का जब मैं मीट करता था कि इंडियंस में तो ऐसा लगता है कि एक चिप जो है मैथमेटिक्स की ऑलरेडी इनबिल्ट माइंड में है एंड इनफैक्ट मैथमेटिक्स प्लेज अ वाइटल रोल इन ऑल साइंसेज एंड इंजीनियरिंग स्ट्रीम लाइक म्यूजिक मैथमेटिक्स नीड प्रैक्टिस फॉर इट्स परफेक्शन एंड एंशियंट इंडियन मैथमेटिशियंस हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इमेंसली टू द फील्ड ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स इवन द इन्वेंशन ऑफ जीरो is attributed to indian and this contribution outweigh all other made by any other nation since it is the basis of decimal number system aur kai baar aisa bhi lagta hai ki zero humne invent kiya aur zero humne gana ga kar ke gama diya aur is zero ke base pe hum usa ko dekhe uk ko dekhe baki developed countries ko dekhe unhone bahut progress kiya hai only on the basis of this zero which we have invented the number system used today was invented by indians and it is still called indo arabic numerals because indian invented them and arab merchants took them to the western world and this is true whether we talk about the bhaskara whether we talk about the aryabhat whether we talk about the brahmagupta ramanujam are some indian mathematics mathematicians i really would like to talk about the ramanujam who what gem of mathematicians gave number of conjectures being a uh, that 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 all all of us knows that ramanujam was not actually mathematician not a formal deg degree of mathematics aur jahan ab main samajhta hu ki ramanujam pe kahiyon ne phd unki theorem pe unhone jo contribute kiya unke works pe wo aaj bhi कई कई स्कॉलर्स जो हैं वो पीएचडी कर रहे हैं कई उनकी पीएचडी निकाल भी दी है सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी में जब हमने मैथमेटिक्स डिपार्टमेंट का नाम रामानुजम के नाम पे रखा तभी तो मैं बात कर रहा था ज्योति प्रकाश जी से मुझे लगता है कि रामानुजम की ग्रेट कंट्रीब्यूशन को देखते हुए वी रियली नीड टू इम्बाइव दो वैल्यूज इन टू द स्कॉलर्स द स्टूडेंट्स उसी चीज को ध्यान में रखते हुए ये अगर सभी एग्री करते हैं तो हम इस डिपार्टमेंट का नाम अभी हमारे 6 अप्रैल को ईसी की मीटिंग है हम उसमें ये ले जाएंगे तो आई रियली वुड लाइक टू रीनेम द डिपार्टमेंट एच रामानुजम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स एंड स्टैटिस्टिक्स तो मैं अच्छे पर्सन से एक आग्रह भी करूंगा कि डिपार्टमेंटल काउंसिल से हमें ये बता दें ताकि हम छह तारीख को इसको now central university himachal is the pioneer of university in the country for implementation of national education policy and just just by introducing the multiple entry exit and abc is not the implementation of nep but beyond that that how we can go for the holistic development of the student and how we can make the student a multidisciplinary that is more important and for that purpose that the mathematics department can play a very important role for that purpose because we have here here also we have already decided and we have already adopted the gadget notification of the university grants commission of the multiple entry exit and academic bank of credit and and now we are going to implement uh, this nep from this academic session aur usme main ye chahta hu ki mathematics department अभी मैं पूछ रहा था तो मैथमेटिक्स डिपार्टमेंट ने अभी वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स में डिप्लोमा और सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स शुरू किया हुआ है और एमएससी मैथमेटिक्स है तो जब इसका नाम स्टैटिस्टिक्स है तो स्टैटिस्टिक्स में कोर्स क्यों नहीं है एक तो मैं ये भी आग्रह करूंगा कि डिपार्टमेंट का जो पूरा नाम है उस हिसाब से इस अकेडमिक सेशन से गिव ए प्रपोजल फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट एटलीस्ट यू मस्ट स्टार्ट स्टैटिस्टिक्स ऑल्सो देर इन दिस डिपार्टमेंट हाँ आपको फैकल्टी का लगेगा हम आपको टू स्टार्ट विद हम आपको कुछ फैकल्टी जो है हम रिसोर्स पर्सन देंगे और उसके बाद हम कुछ पोस्टें भी लाएंगे एंड पोस्टें भी देंगे आपको बट यू मस्ट स्टार्ट स्टैटिस्टिक्स ये ये भी हम निर्णय आज ले लिया है हमने कुछ कुछ मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि स्किल बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी टेकन ए डिसीजन टू गो फॉर फोर्टी सिक्सटी 
एटलीस्ट इन द साइंसेज डिपार्टमेंट फोर्टी परसेंट मस्ट बी द प्रैक्टिस एंड सिक्सटी परसेंट मस्ट बी थ्योरी एंड आउट ऑफ द प्रैक्टिस इट इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एवरी डिपार्टमेंट टू गो फॉर एटलीस्ट टेन टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट स्किल एंड वोकेशनल वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स का कोर्स शुरू किया है बहुत अच्छी बात है बिकॉज वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स वेन आई वॉज वाइस चांसलर इन इवन भगत फूल सिंह महिला विश्वविद्यालय सोनीपत एंड देर ऑल्सो वहाँ पर रेवाड़ी में भी और वहाँ भगतपुर सिंह मिला विश्वविद्यालय में भी हरियाणा में हमने वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स का कोर्स उस समय में आज से कोई छः साल पहले हमने वहाँ स्टार्ट किया था वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स वाई वाई वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स इज इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स इज द नेम टू द एंशियंट सिस्टम मैथमेटिक्स और टू बी प्रिसाइज अ यूनिक टेक्निक ऑफ कैलकुलेशन बेस्ड on simple rules and principles with which any mathematical problem be it arithmetic be it algebra be it geometry or be it trigonometry every every solution we have in the vedic mathematics kai kai bar kai bar ye confusion hota hai main vedic mathematics ka isliye zikr kar raha hu ki vedic math vedic mathematics is not only important for the department of mathematics and statistics it is important for all the departments तो आपके पास सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स अभी 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 हाल ही में ए, क्योंकि क्योंकि इंडिया में जो भी इंप्लीमेंट होता है जो भी स्कीम इंप्लीमेंट होती है वो यूजीसी चेयरमैन के साथ हम एवरी फिफ्टीन डेज वी डिस्कस इट इन डिटेल विद द यूजीसी चेयरमैन और उसके बाद वो जब हमारा यूनानिमिटी बन जाती है देन इट इज इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन द कंट्री जैसे प्रोफेसर ऑफ प्रैक्टिस की बात है प्रोफेसर ऑफ प्रैक्टिस में हमने बहुत डिस्कशन किया प्रोफेसर ऑफ प्रैक्टिस इज ए स्कीम नाउ क्योंकि क्योंकि एक एक व्यक्ति जो जिसने अपने आप को मैं रामानुजम की बात करूं रामानुजम टॉट है फॉर्मल एजुकेशन इन मैथमेटिक्स लेकिन देखिए कितनी बड़ी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन कितनी थ्योरम्स उन्होंने दिए एक एक थ्योरम जो है एक एक जो आ, हम उस पर पी एच करवा सकते हैं तो तो उसी उसी एनालॉजी पे ये 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 आया कि एक एक कोई भी व्यक्ति है जिसने अपने आप को इतना कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट किया है फॉर्मल एजुकेशन नहीं है तो डिपार्टमेंट में प्रोफेसर ऑफ प्रैक्टिस के रूप में उसकी नियुक्ति की जा सके दूसरा इश्यू ये आया कि नाउ ना तो यूनिवर्सिटी कैन स्टार्ट इस पर भी अभी गजट नोटिफिकेशन आने वाली है ना तो यूनिवर्सिटी कैन स्टार्ट ड्यूल डिग्री ज्वाइंट डिग्री ट्विन डिग्री प्रोग्राम उसमें इसका पर्पज क्या है अ स्टूडेंट हु इज डूइंग the msc in mathematics can do simultaneously another degree another certificate another set, uh, diploma of any of the department or of the same department offline 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 online 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 isi analogy pe main department se request karunga ki it is better to start few courses certificate courses or the diploma courses स्किल एंड वोकेशन आप ही के डिपार्टमेंट के विद्यार्थी बेनिफिटेड नहीं हो बाकी सारे डिपार्टमेंट्स के क्योंकि जो हमने बास्केट बनाई है उस बास्केट में भी वो जो है आप अपने कोर्सेज को डालें और अपने विद्यार्थियों को भी वैल्यू एनहांसमेंट के लिए उस तरह के कोर्सेज जो है वो आप नाउ अब तो आगे आने वाले समय में यूजीसी इज मेकिंग इट ए कंपल्सरी की वैल्यू एनहांसमेंट एक एक स्टूडेंट है आपके एम एस मैथमेटिक्स कर लिया अब उसके बाद मैं जॉब की बात नहीं करूंगा वी शुड नॉट लिंक द डिग्री विद द जॉब हाँ प्लेसमेंट की बात करूंगा हायर क्वालिफिकेशन की बात करूंगा क्योंकि नाउ दिस इज द टाइम फॉर सुपर स्पेशलाइजेशन तो उस सुपर स्पेशलाइजेशन में मुझे लगता है कि कुछ के इस तरह के कोर्सेज नाउ यू कैन इंट्रोड्यूस टू एनहांस द वैल्यू ऑफ योर ऑन स्टूडेंट ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड द सेकेंड जो मैं कह रहा था कुछ बेसिक कोर्सेज जो आपने बास्केट में डालने हैं वो आप इस तरह का कोर्सेज ऑनलाइन आप चला सकते हैं ये नोटिफिकेशन बहुत जल्दी हम करने जा रहे हैं ताकि जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं वो बेनिफिटेड हों एक एक जो भारती कृष्णा तीसा जी उनकी बुक जो शंकराचार्य थे फॉर्मो चक्र शंकराचार्य थे जो पुरी के उनकी बुक जो है उनकी बुक बेसिकली तो जब बुक का कंपाइल किया गया लंदन में बैठ करके कंपाइल हुआ लंदन में बैठ करके जब सूत्र पे जब 16 सूत्र और 13 सब सूत्र जो वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स के ये ध्यान में आए इस पे काम हुआ और आप आप ये देखें कि कितने बड़े बड़े स्कॉलर चाहे हम एंड्रयू निकोलस की बात करें या या हम कैनेथ विलियम की बात करें जिन्होंने इन सूत्रा पे डिटेल में काम किया एक एक सूत्रा पे काम कर करके उन्होंने लंडन में और जो ओरिजिनल बुक थी इनकी वो तो गुम हो गई कहीं लेकिन उसके बाद ये कंपाइल हुआ है काम 
लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि यहाँ पर एक लाइब्रेरी में इस तरह की बहुत सी बहुत सब काम हो रहा है पूरे देश भर में बहुत काम हो रहा है वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स में और मुझे लगता है कि दिस डिपार्टमेंट शुड टेक अ लीड रोल कि वो पूरी कंट्री के लिए क्योंकि तो मैं जैसे कह रहा हूँ कि अब तो क्रेडिट ट्रांसफर के लिए क्रेडिट ट्रांसफर के लिए वी आर गोइंग टू आइडेंटिफाई फ्यू टीचर्स फ्यू रिसोर्स पर्सन ऑफ एवरी फील्ड तो वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स में मैं चाहूँगा कि यहाँ से हम चूज करें ऑल इंडिया लेवल पे यहाँ से लिस्ट जाए एक एक विद्यार्थी कैलकाटा में बैठा है वो वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स के क्रेडिट ट्रांसफर करना चाहता है मैं चाहता हूँ कि इस डिपार्टमेंट से वो क्रेडिट ट्रांसफर करें अंडर द एन ई पी दैट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट तो उस तरह का मुझे लगता है कि बहुत अच्छा काम हुआ है मैं तो पहले सभी को प्रणाम कर रहा हूँ ऐसे दिग्गज हमारे सामने आज मैथमेटिशियंस ऐसे बैठे हैं और जहाँ तक तो मैं प्रोफेसर बनर्जी की बात करूँ प्रोफेसर बनर्जी से भी मेरा बहुत बार बैठना हुआ है प्रोफेसर बनर्जी जी जो है मैं तब यहाँ ज्वाइन किया किया था जब वो एक, एक उनके पास वो होता था रेडियो बोलते थे हम वो ट्रांजिस्टर वो कंधे पे रखते थे और उन दिनों जब कमेंट्री चली होती थी हम भी उनके पास जाते थे कि सर स्कोर क्या हो गया है तो दिस इज अ पर्सन तो उस उस तरह के हमने उनका उनका वो देखा है उसके बाद उनको सम्मान भी मिला है वो सम्मान जो है वो केवल उनके लिए नहीं था वो इस मैथमेटिक्स डिपार्टमेंट के लिए विश्वविद्यालय के लिए तो मैं भी चाहता हूँ कि हमारे हमारे पास बहुत अच्छे स्कॉलर्स हैं और आगे आने वाले में दिनों में जितने भी सम्मान मिलेंगे वो इसी डिपार्टमेंट के होंगे इस डिपार्टमेंट का अपना नाम हो और पूरे देश के लिए विश्व के लिए एक एक और कंसेप्ट पे मैं आपका ध्यान दिलाना चाहूँगा एक जो अभी यूजीसी ने डिसीजन लिया है इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन का ये दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट तो इन द टाइम टू कम हाउ वी कैन मेक द डिपार्टमेंट इंटरनेशनल इंटरनेशनल के लिए मुझे लगता है कि यू हैव टू साइन सम एम विद द इंटरनेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन यूनिवर्सिटी दैट इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट तो उस तक भी ध्यान देना चाहिए इंटरनेशनल स्टूडेंट्स को हम इन्वाइट करने जा रहे हैं आगे आने वाले समय में कुछ इंटरनेशनल होस्टल्स की प्रपोजल बन रही है इंटरनेशनल होस्टल विश्वविद्यालय में बने इंटरनेशनल विद्यार्थी जो हैं हमारे यहाँ पर आए उसके लिए भी मुझे लगता है कि मैथमेटिक्स डिपार्टमेंट को इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन इंटरनेशनल एजुकेशन मतलब है कि यू जी सी हैज़ अलाउड नाउ टू ओपन द कैंपसेज ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ द इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटीज आउटसाइड एंड आउटसाइड Their campuses, particularly now from the central level, we are emphasizing on the top 200 universities. उनके साथ contact चल रहा है through embassies. उनके campuses हम यहाँ पर खोलें. That is also very important. And for that purpose, also mathematics department can take a lead role. Now, really, I would like to congratulate to Professor Jyoti Prakash ji and the whole team to take this initiative for organizing this very important seminar of two days. And I am very much hopeful that. That that real outcome will be there, and that outcome will be submitted at the right, right platform for the right decision making. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your blessings. Hello, I am Madhya Pradesh Vishwavidyalaya ke Ganit Vibhag Dwara, tatha. हिमाचल मैथमेटिक सोसाइटी की तरफ से आयोजित इस अंतर्राष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन में अपने व्यस्तम कार्यक्रम से कुछ समय हमारे लिए निकालकर हमें अपने आशीर्वाद वचन और मार्गदर्शन के लिए माननीय कुलपति प्रोफेसर एस पी बंसल जी का अपने डिपार्टमेंट की तरफ से तथा अपने इस अंतर्राष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन की संयोजक समिति की तरफ से हार्दिक अभिनंदन और आभार व्यक्त करता हूं और मुझे आशा है कि हमारे विश्वविद्यालय के गणित विभाग को आपके द्वारा जो सहयोग मिल रहा है वो भविष्य में भी इस तरह से मिलता रहेगा धन्यवाद सर
Now let us continue this another session. And the next I would like to invite the convener, Professor Jaginder Singh Diman, sir, to brief about the uh, two days international conference on recent advances in mathematical sciences. <laughs> I think he is being served, so we should wait for a few time, some more time, and then we will start the proceeding again. So just have a tea. On the behalf of uh, the organizing committee, I, the convener of this International Conference on Recent Advances in Mathematical Sciences, 2023, welcome you all to this conference and to this newly constructed science hall, and which was being used by first time after renovation by the Department of Mathematics. I express my gratitude to Honorable Vice Chancellor, who has just now left uh, this uh, hall, for sparing the valuable time and gracing the occasion as a chief guest in this international conference. It is a matter of privilege and pride to us that Professor J.R. Guptaji, a close associate of Professor M.B. Benerji, his first PhD student, popularly known as Guruji in this campus, is with us, sitting on the dice, waiting for delivering first M.B. Benerji memorial invited talk on his 80th birth, that is today on 29th March. So it is a matter of pride for, also, for us also. I welcome you, sir, on the behalf of organizing committee. I welcome all the invited guests. I welcome all the invited guests from the university, dean of studies, various deans, directors, our former founding fathers, Professor K. S. Srikorji, Professor S. K. Gupta ji, Professor R.G. Sandal ji, Professor R.P. Sarma ji, Professor Bina Sarma ji, and those who couldn't join us, Professor M.G. Gorla ji, Professor Kirti Prakash ji, and others, to this uh, conference. 
uh, uh, we are screening some of the photographs of the invited speakers. We have uh, the invited speaker, Professor Jayar Gupta Ji, Professor R.K. Sarma Ji from IIT, Professor Krishna Madali from Ashoka University, Professor Sarbri Sukla, Director, Symbiosis Institute of Statistics, Pune, Professor Amir Bandopadhyay, who is in the Japan right now and will join tomorrow online. He is a very eminent scientist and uh, Professor R.P. Prajapati from JNU. Uh, we have contacted many more persons, but due to some uh, regions or their uh, busy schedule, Professor Gabriela Baum from uh, Hungary couldn't join us right now. In, she regrets her inability. Professor, uh, for some professor from Gulf country couldn't join us. So uh, this was the, we have a very galaxy of the invited speaker who will present five invited talks during the conference. We have about 70 uh, uh, papers uh, ready for presentation during two days, four technical sessions. And uh, we have about 100 participants which will be, uh, they will join us uh, during two days. So it is again a, a matter of pride that this conference proceedings is being online streamed in YouTube right now first time in this conference is being used, uh, streamed online. So the link has been mailed to many who can join online also this conference. Uh, I express my gratitude to the university for providing us the funds for organizing this conference. I also express gratitude and thankfulness to the uh, sponsors, SJBN, State Bank of India, and this uh, Shiva Institutes, and the DAB Kangra, LR Institutes, for providing us a generous help to organizing this conference. Once again, I thank you all to be a part of this event and conference. I wish you all a uh, grand success and a uh, good stay uh, during your uh, stay in the Simla and in the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Ms. Mehak Mahajan to highlight the mathematical journey of Professor J.R. Gupta, our invited speaker, and his unstoppable interest and love for mathematics. Thank you so much, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Professor J.R. Gupta, popularly known as Guruji among his students, was born on September 5th, 1946 in the village Mamlik Saidi in Solon district near Shimla. He completed his BA and MA in mathematics from Punjab University and has a distinction of being first student of PhD in mathematics Himachal Pradesh University established in 1971 under the guidance of Professor Mihi Benerji as his first PhD student. He retired from the Department of Mathematics in the year 2007 after serving the university for nearly about 44 years in various capacities. He had been the chairman of the Department of Mathematics, Dean Physical Sciences, Dean of Studies, and Acting Vice Chancellor of Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla. His love of mathematics is known to everyone who knows him. He is known as good teacher, good researcher, excellent motivator, and above all a gentle human being. During his illustrious career as a student of mathematics, he published 100 research papers, guided about dozen of PhD students and many MPhil students. Professor Gupta, in the opinion of Professor Banerjee, is a mathematician 
who makes the presence felt in any mathematical investigation through sheer power of analysis and whose writings one simply cannot afford to ignore. His other contributions include the construction and analysis of extended generalized biharmonic equation with matrix coefficients and homogeneous boundary conditions 1985 which not only improve upon the work of Banerjee on the same problem but also reflect his maturity as a mathematician. He has also contributed jointly with Professor Banerjee on several aspects of fluid mechanics, namely thermal and thermohaline instability, relay Taylor instability, shear flow instability, hydromagnetic instability. Professor Gupta has authored numerous research papers on hydro dynamic and hydromagnetic stability published in journals such as Journal of Mathematical Analysis and Applications, Journal of Applied Mathematics and Physics, Journal of Physical Society of Japan, Journal of Mathematical and Physical Sciences, Journal of Australian Mathematical Society. And some of his findings have been highly appreciated for their fundamental character by experts in international reviews. His current interests are history of mathematicians, illustration of fundamental mathematical concepts, and regarding biographies of eminent mathematicians. We are honored and proud to have such a distinguished and learned scholar teacher, researcher amongst us on this auspicious occasion. I humbly invite Professor Jaya Gupta to deliver the first Professor M. B. Banerjee Memorial Lecture on his 80th birth anniversary and enlighten the august audience present here. Please welcome, sir. <laughs> My Honorable Kuniks from the Department of Mathematics, the Chairman Department of Mathematics, Professor Jyoti Prakash, the distinguished guests and invited speakers from the various universities, my colleagues, former colleagues, Professor Shitkot and Professor S.K. Gupta, Dr. R.J. Shandil, Dr. R.P. Sharma, and Professor Bis from the Department of Economics. I am extremely thankful to the Chairman, Department of Mathematics for giving me an opportunity to share the memories of my almost more than three decades of three decades of association with Professor Banerjee. What a beautiful coincidence it is that in February 1943, one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century, David Hilbert, died. And in March 1943 itself, Professor M. B. Banerjee was born. And this coincidence 
is reflected through his work in the field of hydrodynamic and hydromagnetic stability. I found that, like Professor Hilbert, Professor M. B. Banerjee presented a formidable capacity to crack open a difficult research problem by getting rid of the various bushes and hedges around it, mollifying it through his penetrating mathematical analysis, and coming out with a solution which had defied the attempts of stalwarts working in the domain of to which the problem belonged. This fact is amply demonstrated if we have the patience to examine his work with Hawke's eyes. Each of his work papers contain a solution to a significant problem in the domain of hydrodynamic and hydromagnetic stability. It's a known fact that significant problems cannot be solved at the same level of thinking that created them. I divide my memories of the association with him into four equal parts. The first part is the period from 1971 to 1979. This was a period of intense teaching and research activity. And during this period, I got registered for my PhD degree with Professor Bin Banerjee. And there is a history behind this registration. I will not go into that. I completed my PhD degree and became the first PhD student of Professor Banerjee. Then comes the period of 80s. This period I can safely term to be a golden period of Professor Banerjee. It was in 1981 that Professor Banerjee got married to a Bengali girl named Bhaswati Bose and obviously afterwards Bhaswati Banerjee. And in the year 1985, he was blessed with a baby girl. And in the year 1988, the prestigious Shanti Sroop Bhatnagar Award was awarded to him for his work in the domain of hydrodynamic and hydromagnetic stability. Then comes the period of 90s. 90s was a period of unification of the various results that we had de derived earlier. And what we found was that the various eigenvalue problems that we had considered earlier for diff different physical configurations can be unified into a single differential equation which can be considered in n-dimensional Euclidean space Rn. All the results that we had derived for the principle of exchange of stab stabilities as well as the bonds for the really linear growth rate were derived in a single stroke from this equation. After 90s comes the period of, after sorry, 80s comes the period of 90s. The period of 90s was a period of unification of the various results. And finally comes the period from 2000 to 2003. This was a period of rest and relaxation. And in 2003, 
29 March 2003, he attained the age of 60 years. And finally, on 30th June 2003, FNL was arranged by a university to, to Professor Banerjee. And in this way, our 32 years of working together came to an end. And most probably, in August 2003, so far as I remember, Dr. Shardil must be knowing better than me, he went to Kanpur, the journey that had started from Kanpur, coming to the three-dimensional space in Shimla, again going back to two-dimensional state, started. And finally, he paid or say, I can say, paid goodbye to the beautiful sine and cosine curves of the state of Himachal Pradesh. With this short summary of my association with Professor Banerjee, I stop here. Thank you very much. Now, at this age, one has to deal with so many infirmities. Your eyes do not cooperate, your ears don't cooperate, your hands don't cooperate. So one has to be very careful while speaking as well as while listening to others. And I think and now wish best of luck to all of you, to all my previous students, and to the distinguished guests present here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful lecture. and. Uh, also for uh, telling us about the memorable journey of uh, Professor M.B. Binaji in this department and in Himachal Pradesh. Now our inaugural session comes to an end and we have with us our organizing secretary, Professor Khem Chen, and I invite him to present both of them. मैं हिमाचल प्रदेश विश्वविद्यालय के गणित विभाग द्वारा तथा हिमाचल मैथमेटिक्स सोसाइटी द्वारा आयोजित इस अंतर्राष्ट्रीय सम्मेलन में आप सभी का स्वागत करता हूं। हमारा गणित विभाग आज इस सुक्ष्म परिस्थिति से गुजर रहा है। उसमें हमारे पूर्व में रहे गुरुजनों का वर्षों का परिश्रम, सतत परिश्रम, किया गया रिसर्च वर्क की ही परिकाष्ठा की परिणति है मैं इसके लिए डिपार्टमेंट के सभी पूर्व गुरुजनों का प्रोफेसर जी आर गुप्ता जी का प्रोफेसर के एस सिरकोट जी का प्रोफेसर एस के गुप्ता जी का प्रोफेसर आर जी शैंडल जी का प्रोफेसर आर पी शर्मा जी का प्रोफेसर वीना गुप्त वीना शर्मा जी का दिल से आभार व्यक्त करता हूं आपने इस सम्मेलन में अपनी उपस्थिति दर्ज करके हमें अपना आशीर्वाद प्रदान किया हम इसके लिए आपके आभारी हैं हमें विश्वास है कि हम हमें आपका आशीर्वाद भविष्य में भी इसी तरह से मिलता रहेगा इस ज्ञान रूपी यज्ञ में 
हमारे विशेष विशेषज्ञ जो इतनी दूर से इस सम्मेलन में भाग लेने के लिए आए हैं और वर्षों तक जिन्होंने अपने सतत साधना से अपने द्वारा अर्जित किए गए ज्ञान रूपी धन को हमारे साथ साझा करने के लिए अपनी सबकृति प्रदान की है उसके लिए मैं प्रोफेसर आर के शर्मा जी का प्रोफेसर कृष्णा मांडले जी का प्रोफेसर शर्वरी गुप्ता जी का डॉक्टर आर पी प्रजापति जी का अपने और अपने विभाग की तरफ से धन्यवादी हूँ आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ और मुझे आशा है कि आपके द्वारा किया गया ये छोटा सा एक पुनित कार्य हमारे प्रतिभागियों में ऊर्जा का संचार करेगा और उनके कैरियर में एक मील का पत्थर साबित होगा मैं अपने डिपार्टमेंट के चेयरमैन उनकी सारी टीम को इस कार्यक्रम में किए जा रहे कार्यों के लिए उनका अपने ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी की तरफ से धन्यवाद अर्पित करता हूं। मैं हमारे विश्वविद्यालय हिमाचल प्रदेश के विभिन्न कॉलेजों से आए प्रति अध्यापक गणों का और प्रतिभागियों का इस सम्मेलन में उपस्थित होने के लिए और अपनी सहभागिता सुनिश्चित करने के लिए अपनी ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी की तरफ से धन्यवाद अर्पित करता हूं और उनका आभार व्यक्त करता हूं। साथ ही साथ जैसे कि आपको पता ही है कि रेनोवेशन के बाद हमारा ये साइंस हॉल जो है पहली बार इसमें कोई कार्यक्रम हो रहा है तो इसमें सुविधाओं का बहुत बड़ा अभाव है इसके लिए मैं डिपार्टमेंट के सभी उन विद्यार्थियों का जो डिपार्टमेंट की आत्मा होती है और जिन्होंने लगभग दो दिनों तक लगातार सतत प्रयास से इस हॉल को इस रूप में लाने का प्रयास किया है उन्हीं सभी शोधार्थियों का और विद्यार्थियों का अपने दिल से तदिल से शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं मैं आज के इस प्रोग्राम की जो रीड है ये ऑनलाइन गजेट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक गजेट इसका इस तरह से सुव्यवस्थित करने के लिए डॉक्टर तरुण जी का उनकी टीम का ये यू से आए बच्चे भूपेंद्र लक्ष्य और वाईफाई टीम से हमारे साथ जुड़े गौरव जी पंकज जी और उनके साथी और उनका भी अपने ओर से तथा ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी की ओर से आभार व्यक्त करता हूं साथ ही साथ इस कार्यक्रम में जो स्पॉन्सरशिप हमारे आए हैं मैं उनका भी ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी की तरफ से धन्यवाद अर्पित करता हूं मैं हमारे विश्वविद्यालय के इकोनॉमिक विभाग से सेवानिवृत्त हुए प्रोफेसर एन एस बिस्ट जिन्होंने की मैथमेटिकल स्टैटिस्टिक्स में इतना काम किया है कि वो हमारे लिए ईर्ष्या का कारण बन गए थे उनका भी इस कार्यक्रम में सम्मिलित होने के लिए और अपनी उपस्थिति दर्ज करने के लिए हृदय से आभार व्यक्त करता हूं। अंत में जिन्होंने भी प्रोक्ष या अप्रोक्ष रूप से इस कार्यक्रम को संचालित करने में अपनी भूमिका अदा की है मैं उनका अपने दिल से धन्यवाद अर्पित करता हूँ और मेरी मंगल कामना है कि आज माता दुर्गाष्टमी का त्यौहार है आप सबका मनोरथ सफल हो धन्यवाद Thank you, sir. This was all for uh, inaugural session, and uh, now we have a small tea break for fifteen for fifteen fifteen minutes, uh, followed by the invited talks and other sessions of the day, and we will assemble here at uh, sharp twelve fifteen. Uh, next uh, invited talk uh, is uh, at twelve uh, fifteen by Professor Pishna Madley. Madley, sorry.
मोबाइल है यहाँ मंच पर था किसी का हो तो मेरे को ले सकता है
हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर टूडे फर्स्ट सेशन एंड वी हैव विद अस प्रोफेसर कृष्णा मेडले for the invited talk on the topic random operators and their spectral theory and this session will be chaired by professor rajesh sharma and it is my privilege to introduce our session chair professor rajesh sharma professor rajesh sharma is working in the department of mathematics himachal pradesh university shimla since 1997 he is phd from the same university and was a post 
डॉक्टर फेलो एट आई आई टी मुंबई ड्यूरिंग नाइनटीन नाइन्टी फोर टू नाइनटीन नाइन्टी सेवन ही इज़ वर्किंग ऑन मैट्रिक्स एनालिसिस एंड हैज़ पब्लिश हिज वर्क इन जर्नल्स लाइक लीनियर अलजब्रा एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन रॉकी माउंटेन जर्नल ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स professor krishna is working in department of mathematics ashoka university and p r devi he received his doctorate from indian statistical institute new delhi central in 1985 during his post doc work he worked at university of california and also research instructor at california institute of technology then he worked at the institute of mathematical sciences chennai from 1988 to 2006 he is now working at ashoka university since 2016 he also spent one year at brown university and one year at indian institute of science bangalore he is a fellow of national academy of sciences and in the editorial board of journal reviews in mathematical physics Incidentally, his PhD supervisor, Professor K. G. Sina, also received Gandhi Shri Bharnagar Prize in the year 1982. Same year, Sindhi Professor Banerjee received the prize. Professor Krishna is a mathematical physicist working in spectral theory of Schrödinger operator. Today, he is going to talk on the topic random operators and their spectral. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. I'll speak from here because you call it my field, not physics. Uh, let me first thank the department for the invitation to come and give a talk here, and the excellent hospitality you provided. to me and other invitees i guess uh <clears throat> am i audible yeah so i'm going to talk about what are called random operators so what are these uh let us first look at some matrices everyone knows what a matrix is a jacobi matrix is a n dimensional square matrix of this form Where the diagonal has some real numbers a1 to am, and the upper and super and sub diagonal has ones, and the rest of the entries are zero. So this is a tri-diagonal matrix, and it's called a Jacobi matrix. When the diagonal entries are real, then the matrix is self-adjoint, which means if you transpose the matrix. And take complex conjugate in case A is complex, then it is itself. So that's a self-adjoint matrix. But I'll deal with only real matrices. So all the entries of the matrices are real for today. Uh, then such self-adjoint matrices have, from linear algebra, we know that they have eigenvalues, namely numbers lambda one, lambda two, lambda n, which are uh real and the associated eigen vectors e1 to en give an orthonormal basis for rn these are general properties of self adjoint matrices so we also know from linear algebra that such a matrix can be diagonalized And the diagonal entries of such a matrix are precisely the eigenvalues lambda i. The diagonalization can be done by elementary methods, or, in fact, the eigenvectors form 
a orthogonal matrix and if you uh, use the orthogonal matrix to conjugate this matrix that you started with, that will give you your diagonal matrix. So this diagonal matrix can be written uh, not necessarily as a uh, matrix that you know, but in the form sum of lambda i pi, where pi is are matrices which are orthogonal projections. That means they uh, their square is itself and they are also self adjacent Okay. These PIs give you orthogonal projections onto the one dimensional subspace generated by the eigenvector. So PI gives the projection onto the eigenvector EI. So this is the way of writing the diagonal matrix that you know. So P1, for example, is a matrix which is 1 at the 1, 1 entry and 0 everywhere else. P2 is the one with 1, 1, 1 entry, 1 at the 2, 2 entry, 0 everywhere else, and so on. So these are the orthogonal matrices. So the diagonal matrix is written in this way. So this is precisely the content of spectral theorem. So what is called spectral theorem is stated like this, namely a matrix A, which is self-adjoint, so in particular the Jacobi matrix that I consider, when you diagonalize it and the eigenvalues are lambda 1 to lambda n, then it can be written as sum of lambda i pi. So all this holds even when the dimension of the matrix is infinite. So what do you mean by an infinite matrix? You must make sense of such a thing. So in such a case, the matrix operates on a, as a linear transformation on L2 of z, z. Namely, all sequences, doubly infinite sequences, that is, sequences indexed by the integers, with the property that the sum of squares of the entries is finite. So if you collect all those sequences, that forms the space L2 of z. And on that, uh, infinite matrix acts, acts as a linear transformation. So the linear transformation in the case of a Jacobi matrix, looks like A acting on a vector u at the point n is sum of u plus j, u of n plus j, where absolute value of j is 1. So that means that sum, g, sum is nothing but u of n plus 1 plus u of n minus 1. And then the diagonal entry is a n multiplying u n. So this is the infinite dimensional version of the Jacobi matrix. And the a n's are real value, is what I have taken here. So this is also self-adjoint for any real sequence a n. For simplicity, we can take this sequence to be bounded, then the resulting matrix gives you what is called a bounded linear transformation on L2 host. There is a difference, however, such self-adjoint linear transformations, A, may not have eigenvalues. Because they are infinite, something else can happen. But has something called spectrum that is associated with it. The spectrum for a matrix is precisely a set of eigenvalues. And we know that if I take the matrix, subtract it by an eigenvalue times the identity and look at the resulting matrix, then you cannot invert it. That is not invertible because it has kernel non-zero. So it is this property that is extended for general linear transformations on, a, on L2 of Z to identify what is called the spectrum. So the spectrum of a linear operator A on a Hilbert space, a Hilbert space is nothing but a complete inner product space. So L2 of Z has an inner product and with respect to that it is complete and such a linear vector space which is complete uh, in a product space is called a Hilbert space. So a linear transformation A on Hilbert space is defined as, the spectrum of this is defined as sigma of A is all points in the complex plane with the property A minus Z times identity inverse is not bounded. It, 
We don't say that it is not invertible, but it is not bounded. That means a linear transformation is not bounded if you can find at least one vector on which it is not defined. So that is the simplest way to understand a unbounded linear transformation, right? So if a minus zi inverse is an unbounded operator, then you say that point is a in the spectrum. If it is bounded, you say it's the resolvent. Okay? So this is the generalization of eigenvalues for infinite dimensional matrices. It is the spectrum, and this is what uh, gives a characterization of the matrix and so on. So the spectrum in this case is called uh, it can be an interval or any closed subset of the real line. If you have a bounded linear transformation, it's always a bounded closed subset. But otherwise, it could be infinite. And yes. So the spectral theorem, which is still valid for all such self-adjoint operators, whether finite dimensional matrix or infinite dimensional or whatever, is given in a slightly elaborate form. That is why I wrote it down the diagonal matrix in the form sum of lambda i pi. So given a bounded self-adjoint operator, I'm taking bounded for simplicity. It is not necessary to take bounded. Given a bounded self-adjoint operator, there is a spectral measure E A. I'm giving index A to say that it is associated with A on R such that A is given as integral lambda times D lambda of D E of D A of lambda. So we have to make sense of all these things. What is the meaning of this integral? And in what sense it makes sense and so on. So if you take any vector in L2 of Z, which is the Hilbert space I'm considering here, we have a measure, any interval i going to f in a product E A i of f. E A of i is a projection, orthogonal projection. So that acting on a ve vector f is a vector. So if you take inner product with f, that's also another vector. And it turns out to be positive because Ea is a positive operator. So projection is positive, non-negative. So the interval i going to f in a product Ea i of f gives you a measure. Let's call it mu f sub f. So in terms of this measure, we write down how the operator or its functions look like. So that f in the product phi a of f is integral phi of x d mu f of x. So integrate the function phi x by the measure, and that's what gives you the function of the operator acting on the vector. Okay. In the case of a matrix, this simply says that, if, for example, if you take the function which is the trace of a matrix which is sum of lambda i, this gives you uh, sum of uh, lambda i it can be thought of as uh, inner product of the function a going to itself with respect to the vectors uh, which are the orthonormal vectors and so phi i a phi i sum over i that gives you this. And that's simply lambda i. So any function of a self-adjoint, any nice function of self-adjoint operator, phi can be written. For example, you can write e to the power a, you can make sense of it. Logarithm of a, if a is strictly positive, you can make sense of it. Or any other nice function of a, you can make sense of this using the spectral theorem. Because all we are doing is integrating functions with respect to measures. We are just uh, integrating a function with respect to a measure, so it's easy to write down the values of inner product of the linear transformation acting on. So here is a, a spectrum in a few cases. I'm still considering the tridiagonal operator, the Jacobi operator in infinite dimensions. 
If ANs are zero, that is all the diagonal entries are zero, then the resulting spectrum is uh, the interval minus 2D to 2D. If I am taking L2 of Z, then D is one, then in that case, the spectrum is minus two to that interval. I am taking a more general uh, operator on L2 of ZD and writing down the spectrum here. If AN is a periodic function of period N, say, then the spectrum is union of some closed intervals. The intervals could be disjoint. Uh, if they are not disjoint, also one writes it like this, but to keep, tra keep track of the count of the spectrum. But if you want, you can also take it to disjoint. See? Write down only the disjoint parts. So as AIs and BIs are not easy to determine from the periodic sequence AN, but in some cases you can write it down. But it's a hard problem to identify that. But you know that there are only uh, finitely many intervals that one can easily identify, but it is not easy to identify what the intervals are. Okay? But for specific periodic uh, sequences, you can write them down. So if AN is, for example, going to zero at infinity at some rate, then the spectrum of A consists of, for example, the rate is bigger than two, then it consists of this interval minus two to two in one dimension, union some number of points, eigenvalues, which are outside, let's say. So the spectrum changes based on the diagonal sequence that one is dealing with. So these are some examples to get an idea of how the spectrum will look like. You can see that, for example, that they are not eigenvalues only. That is the point of uh, the difference of infinite dimensional self adjoint matrices from finite dimensional matrices. So, okay, these are all matrices, the entries are all fixed. So, random operators are the self adjoint matrices A, where the ANs are now real value random variables. So, what is a real value random variables? Variable <clears throat> if you take a set and if it is, it's called a sample space, it, it, it comes from some sample, but it's just a set. And then you can take certain correct collection of subsets which form certain algebra called sigma algebra. If the set is a finite set, then you can take what is called a Boolean algebra that has the collection of sets has, for every element there, a complement is there, countable unions are there, and such a collection is called a sigma algebra. So if you take set X, then subsets of the set having this property, that this collection is closed under taking complements and countable unions, then such a collection is called a sigma algebra. Then given such a uh, set, and its sigma algebra of subsets. Any function from x, say, to r, real value, which respects certain measurability condition, which I will not state what it is, but any function which is has a little bit more property is a random variable. So random variable is not to be confused with anything random. It's nothing random. It's simply a function, okay? So, a random operator is one where each entry, let me keep, stick to the uh, tridiagonal operators, where only the diagonals are functions, otherwise it's one or zero, let's stop it. So the diagonal entries now are functions on some set. Such a matrix is called a random operator. So we index the function by uh, omega. Omega comes from the set on which the an is a function. 
Okay, A M is a function on some set. That set has points which are labeled by omega. So this A M of omega varies as omega varies. And therefore the whole matrix varies. The first part is the same. The second part is an anomaly. Okay. The function A N could be the same for different N or it could be different. Typically, these are different goals. So a random matrix, so random operator is of something, something like this. So most of the entries of the matrix are zero, except the super and subdiagonal and the diagonal. Right, that's what I've taken here. But a random matrix you keep hearing also is one where all the entries are random variables. But I won't look at it now, okay? So why do we study random operators? We all know that semiconductors that are used for making computer integrated circuits called chips uh, are coming from semiconductors. Semiconductors are materials that at certain voltages behave like conducting materials like a you know, copper wire or at some others, they don't conduct, behave like a piece of wood. So these are called semiconductors. Sometimes they are insulators at some voltages, and some voltages it are, they are in a conductor, so electricity can conduct. So these are the materials that are used for making various kinds of uh, small transistors, and millions of billions of them go into making your computer chips. So these semiconductor materials are materials, namely they are composed of uh, atoms uh, regularly spaced with or without impurities. So these materials are just mod modeled in a certain way, which I'll mention in a moment. So the random operators uh, are uh, used to describe the conductivity properties of such disordered materials. That is, the spectrum will tell you whether some energy regions they conduct or they don't conduct. Okay? That is why you would consider the random operators. So here is the description. A crystalline materials with impurities are modeled by the random Schrodinger operator, operators on this collection of functions, sequence spaces, that is Hilbert space. The operator looks like this. The Laplacian on R3 plus some random potential. Multiplication. So Laplacian is Laplacian, this is Laplacian and some random operator. So when you have a crystalline material, the atoms are organized regularly in a uh, lattice. Right? In three dimensional space, for example, a two dimensional space, uh, at say for every integer coordinate point, you have a cube sitting there and you can think of an atom sitting at that point having a sphere of influence which is roughly the cube. So these are all atoms spaced there at, at intervals and they could be a different type of atoms. For example, if you, even if you take a copper wire, the copper wire need not have only copper atoms everywhere. Based on the kind of uh, dirt that comes in in making it, the copper wire could be having some other kinds of uh, atoms interspersed, iron or nickel or whatever it is. And two different manufacturers making copper wires may not have the same impurities. For example, something that you buy in Himachal Pradesh in one shop may have impurities which is very different from something that you buy in some other shop. So these are different configurations of the randomness. The omega parameterizes the different uh, copper wires that you buy, for example, in different places. You can think of it like that. That is the sample space. So even when you do, do this, even when you have such distinct materials, but which come from similar characteristics, namely this potential, then we should have all these copper wires conducting electricity. I mean, you cannot have a copper wire that is 
solved here that becomes an insulator suddenly for your for your uh, voltages that you get in your house right so this formulation will tell us if this mathematical formulation uh, as a theory should tell us whether such a thing happens or not right as a theory we should be able to say that it doesn't matter where you buy your copper wire from they will all conduct right that's what we are trying to do so somehow the special properties that is the places where the material described by this uh, schrodinger operator will conduct or not should not depend on the randomness parameter omega so that's what one is trying to find so uh, anderson gave an approximate approximation of the above schrodinger operator to l2 of zd see the atoms were located at some integer points in three dimensional space we considered them to be cubes which are periodically located but he approximated it by just points in the lattice zd uh, for d equal to 3 and then reduce the operator the schrodinger operator to this matrix that i started with so the laplacian is reduced to this adjacency operator on zd if you think of zd as a graph then there is an adjacency matrix so that is precisely this linear transformation given here and then a randomness which is the random potential in in physics we know that you have a kinetic energy part and a potential energy part and for for any system and this is the kinetic energy part of the operator and this is the potential energy part of the operator and this is the total energy operator of the quantum mechanical system so that's what describes the uh, material that one is looking at say in d dimensions okay and the random potential says that i can consider different impurity configurations of materials that i am looking at now mathematically the parameter omega comes from i will mention this but if you don't understand it's okay uh, we consider a space omega bp a probability space omega is a sample space set of uh, b is the sigma algebra and p is a probability measure and pn is a real value random variable on omega for each n uh, and these are the random operators that we consider okay there is a little more structure so here are some examples of these operators the collection vn could be independent and identically distributed random variables uh, the common distribution being mu for example or v omega of n could be a function cosine of some alpha dot n plus omega omega n 0 to pi to the power z uh, this in one one dimensional uh, in 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 d dimensions alpha is a vector in 0 1 to the power d omega is the parameter here in 0 to pi so that is the randomness and many more of these type okay so the first example mu can be the normal distribution this measure mu so these random variables could be distributed as by the uh, normal distribution uniform distribution on ab on some interval bernoulli distribution poisson and so on you can take any distribution you want right so in the second case we can take any probability measure on 0 1 uh, and alpha could also be rational or irrational or whatever the vector has rational components rational components whatever it is that you want so all these form examples and many many more and all these things have a structure okay and and the structure is following so if you assume zd which is a additive group it's an abelian group under addition that acts on this sample space omega 
That means the point omega is taken by a point of zd to um, t, t sub n omega, right? So if it acts on this and p is an ergodic with respect to this, the probability measure is ergodic with respect to this. That means the only invariant sets are having measure zero or one with respect to p. Invariant means you add the zd on omega, some subset of omega goes to some other subset under the action. These two sets should have the if they if they are the same then the set you started with should have measure 0 or 1. That's called ergodic. So when you have uh, the omega and p to be ergodic under the action of zd, then the operators with respect to this action uh, and translations on omega d should be covariant. Covariant means that uh, something like this. So the operator at a point t sub n omega that is shifted by point of zd to another point omega should be given like this, should be unitarily equivalent to h of omega itself. Okay? Where um is just the translation on L2 of zd. That's a unitary operator. Translations on this are unitary. So that unitary operator should conjugate the action of zd on omega. So that's called a covariance under this ergodic action. So this is the structure we want for all these operators. And all the, all the examples that I gave have this structure. Right? So once you have this structure, what, what this means is the materials that are, have the uh, impurities doped in different ways, they all have, you can transform one of them into the other by some transformation. So once you have this structure, then here is a great theorem by Leonard Pasteur, who is a Ukrainian mathematical physicist. Uh, he showed that consider an ergodic probability in space, omega bp, and consider the associate h of omega on L2 of zd, which is covariant under the action of P, uh, zd on omega. Then there is a fixed set omega, sigma, fixed set, subset of R, depending on d and the measure p such that sigma of h of omega is this fixed set almost every omega. So in other words, almost every omega, these random operators, which vary with omega, have the same spectrum. So that is what reflects in real, li real life as the copper wire that you buy from your shop in uh, here in Himachal Pradesh, in Shimla, or one that you buy in Chennai, work, both work conduct electricity. So this is a mathematical statement of that fact. Okay? If you think about it, it will be surprising that both of them conduct electricity, actually, because they have different impurities. So it's a, it's a beautiful mathematical theorem that this happens. So, what are the interesting questions? So, that's one major theorem. There are also other components which I have not mentioned. So, what are the interesting questions about these operators? Uh, Rajesh, how much time do you have? Ten minutes? Ten minutes? So, the questions are, are these operators self-adjoint? What is this, their spectrum? As omega varies, are they self-adjoint? What is the spectrum? What is the spectral type? I'll tell you what it is. And some other regularity. So let me quickly say this. This operator, the first part that I have taken, the uh, shift operator by addition to shift, that actually is a multiplication operator by this function when you use Fourier series to transform elements of L2 of Zd. So if you take it to uh, L2 of minus pi to pi to the d, on that, this operator H becomes a multiplication by this function. I think I've written something else here. Oh no, I define this operator M here on this L2 of Zd, and uh, this is unitarily equivalent to this operator here. H and M are unitarily equivalent. 
and therefore the spectrum of the this part of it is minus 2d to 2d and it's a bounded operator and v is itself a multiplication by the sequence so that's automatically self adjoint because the real entries it's a diagonal operator which real entries it's self adjoint trivial and therefore the sum is always self adjoint this plus that uh, plus that the sum is always self adjoint so h omega is self adjoint is clear so I will stick to the case when a n's are ID random variables for simplicity with the distribution given by uh, the Lebesgue measure on the interval 0, 1. Okay, that means that random variables take values in 0, 1 and the probability that they take value in some subset of 0, 1, s is simply the length of that subset or Lebesgue measure of that subset. Okay. So in this case, the spectrum of H omega is just the algebraic sum of minus 2d to 2d plus 0, 1, namely it is this. That is the spectrum. One can show this, right? It's just the algebraic sum because the random variables are ID. Okay? So suppose phi n is an orthonormal basis for L2 of Z D. Then you look at a certain measure nu, which is you take the spectral measure of h of omega of the self adjoint operator. I have not told you what it is, but this is something that you can take it from me that there is a projection value measure. And look at the numerical measure associated with the vector phi n and the spectral measure. So this is just an ordinary probability measure. For a given n, this is the probability measure, but a random probability measure because omega is also varying. So take this random probability measure, you put some weights, add it up, that's also a probability measure. So that's also a random probability measure. So consider this random probability measure associated with the self adjoint operator H of omega. For every omega, this is a nu of omega is a measure probability measure. Then we can write the Lebesgue decomposition of this measure nu as its absolutely continuous part, uh, singularly continuous part and atomic part. Atomic part is nothing but the part of the measure that gives positive measure to one point. That can only be a countable set. Right? So this is the Lebesgue decomposition. Then take the supports of these measures. That is, support means the uh, large, this largest, the smallest closed set whose complement gets measure 0 by a measure. That's called the support of the measure. Okay? The smallest closed set whose complement gets measure 0 by the measure is called the support of the measure. So take that associated with these three components. By the way, these three components are mutually singular, singular measures. So if you know a little bit of measure theory, you know what singularity is. So nu can be decomposed always like this. Of course, any of these components could be zero. For example, in the example that I took, the indicator function of zero one times dx, that measure is purely absolutely continuous and it does not have this and this component. Only has this, it is equal to equivalent to this. So when you do that, the supports of these measures are called support of this component is called the absolutely continuous spectrum. Support of this is called singularly continuous spectrum, and support of this is called the point spectrum of the operator. So why is it relevant? It's relevant because the absolutely continuous spectrum uh, gives the region of energies for which a material uh, described by the random operator actually conducts. So if you know that there is absolutely continuous spectrum for some random operator that I've described, then you know that the corresponding material will conduct at certain energies. The point spectrum of the energies uh, mentioned will become an insulator if it is point spectrum. So if a material exhibits both 
absolutely continuous in point spectrum, then it's a semitone. Uh, is the time up? Okay, let me fast forward. Yeah, these are some of the books if you would like to know. You can take the slide from others. Yeah, thank you. Any question? Let me thank Professor Krishna for such a nice and informative talk. Thank you. Now I invite Professor Jyoti Prakash to honor our invited speaker. With Mafral Topi and Momento. Now our session chair, Professor Rajesh Sharma, please sir, honor him with muffler, toffee and memento. Now our next invited talk is we will be started soon and uh, next talk uh, is delivered by Professor R.P. Prajapati and the session will be chaired by Professor R.P. Shandil and I invite Mehak Mahajan to introduce our session chair. Good afternoon everyone. I again welcome you all for this second session uh, and we have with us Professor Ram Prasad Prachapati for the invited talk on the topic hydrodynamic fluid instabilities applications in space and astrophysical plasma and this session will be chaired by Professor R.G. Shandi. It is my privilege to introduce our session chair, Professor R.G. Shandil. Professor R.G. Shandil has served the Department of Mathematics, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla from 1979 to 2013. He has completed his PhD from the same university under the guidance of Professor M.B. Venert. He has about 70 research papers in the International Journal of Repute. He guided many PhD and MPhil students. He served the department in many capacities. In few words, he has been soul and heart of the department. Now I request Professor R.G. Shandil to formally introduce our invited speaker and chair the session. And I also invite Professor Ram Prasad Pradipati to come on the stage.
Now I, I invite uh, Dr. Professor Ram Prasad Prajapati ji to deliver his talk. Uh, Professor Prajapati is uh, serving at the GNU in the School of Physical Sciences. He, his areas of interest include theory, computational and simulation studies in astrophysical plasmas, hydrodynamic waves and instabilities. He was a visiting associate at Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, Pune, India from July 2019 to June 2022 and a postdoctoral fellow at the Institute of Plasma Research, Gandhinagar, India from December 2010 to July 2011 with Professor Raj Raman Ganesh. Professor Pajapati has three major research projects to his credit. He is editor and reviewer, reviewer of many international journals. He, is, he has visited many countries and delivered invited talks at several places. He has won various awards including Young Scientist in Physics, Beauty, Booty Young Scientist Award in Physics, BRICS Young Scientist. Prajapati ji has been regular columnist and panelist at various discussion forums. I invite Professor Prajapati to please deliver his invited talk. Thank you very much, sir, for your nice introduction. So on this great occasion, when we are going to celebrate the International Conference in the Memory of Professor M. B. Banerjee and uh, it is told here that Professor Banerjee has also received the Bhatnagar Award in uh, 1988. So prior to that, that uh, five years, in 1983, Professor S. Chandrasekhar received the Nobel Prize on the uh, formation of the white dwarfs. And his uh, interesting research area was also hydrodynamic instability and stability. So it is my pleasure to deliver a talk on some work of the that is related directly with the Professor S. Chandrasekhar that is on the hydrodynamic fluid instabilities applications in space and astrophysical plasmas. This is So I will cover my talk under the following heads. First, I, I would like to tell something about the introduction of the field and then the idea of the wave propagation in ordinary air media as well as in the conducting fluid media. Then there is also some special course is taught at MSc level here. So I will cover the magnetohydrodynamic and MHD waves in plasmas and on the some fundamental instabilities in plasmas in which I will be talking about the Calvin Helmholtz, Rayleigh Taylor instability, Rayleigh Bernard convection, and the important one, gravitational genes instability, which is responsible for the star formation, and then applications of genes instability in the structure formation. So, when we go through the literature, so we see that there is a unique phenomena of wave propagation and instabilities in several astrophysical systems like in the uh, circumstellar disk or in interstellar media or molecular cloud, nebula, circumstellar disk. So there are several astrophysical systems where there is a significance of wave propagation and instability. In addition to that, if you see some kind of laboratory experiments like fusion reactor, that is tokamak or inertial confinement fusion or Q machine. So in these type of astrophysical in the laboratory system, there is a great significance of waves and instabilities. So these instabilities, they are basically responsible for the structure formation in the astrophysical system. So everything which we see in the space that is formed due to the instabilities, so there is a great significance of these instabilities. So how do we observe these instabilities or wave using some kind of techniques? So recently NASA has launched a Parker Solar Probe by which the observation says that there is a propagation of sub wave of solar wind that is come out from the sun corona. And these MHD waves, they 
are observed in the solar wind solar corona and in the heliosphere of the sun so whenever these waves are instability they become very high growing mode so they generally turn into the turbulent nature and the turbulence is generally observed in the both cases so basically uh, the hydrodynamic instability and instability is studied not only in fluid dynamics or fluid mechanics but uh, in the plasma physics they are are, are uh, also important in plasma physics is uh, nothing but it is a fourth dimension or fourth state of the matter where there are free electrons ionized atoms and ions and neutral particles are there so these plasmas in space basically it is a high temperature and low pressure plasma and uh, at very high temperature the matter actually uh, goes into the fourth state of the matter that is called the plasma so if we see the matter of this whole universe so around 99% of the matter in this universe that is in visible state it is the plasma and rest 1% is the matter which is which is in visible or we can say that there is no any plasma so this is a typical picture which shows here different plasma environments which is uh, in terms of the density and temperature of the various systems so you can see that here we have a range of astrophysical or laboratory system that is aurora interstellar space solar wind or solar corona inertial confinement fusion where these plasma exist and these hydrodynamic instabilities they are very popular so let us come to uh, know that how the wave propagation happen in ordinary air media so the sound wave or the acoustic wave which generally be by which we hear something that is uh, the mathematical explanation about that so we use the hydrodynamic equations and in the hydrodynamic set of equations we use the fundamental navier stokes equation without any viscosity so when viscosity is ignored then it becomes basically the euler equation that is the first order differential equation and in addition to that we also consider the mass conservation equation as well as the equation of state so after a very simple linearization and using the normal mod analysis when we consider the perturbation growing like exponentially so finally we get the phase speed of the sound speed that is equals to this cs that is acoustic speed and in air media it is 343 meter per second so using this uh, simple idea we can extend it for the magnetized plasma case also and we can discuss about the wave propagation in the magnetized plasma so this mhd is a very well known uh, method in the plasma physics by which we can study the wave propagation in the magnetized plasma considering the bulk scale size and uh, there are two kinds of wave about which i am going to talk so mhd is nothing but it is a combination of magnetic field as well as the hydrodynamic fluid so whenever we discuss about the motion of any conducting fluid in the presence of magnetic field so several interesting phenomena are observed and in which waves and instabilities are few of them so these are observed in various astrophysical system like if we see the sun corona that is the outer environment of the sun that is solar corona so where there is a propagation of this kind of waves here observed and even in when the solar wind flow through the solar corona it, and it enters into the earth's magnetosphere so these solar winds they are protected by the van allen belt which basically protect the harmful radiations that are coming towards the earth in some more examples if we see here so in the sun heliosphere that is a kind of bubble which uh, which is around the sun through which the solar wind uh, propagates so there is a great role of mhd wave propagation in these systems also anyone in some fusion reactor like tokamak and uh, international thermonuclear experimental reactor when the plasma is produced at very high temperature so there is a propagation of these hydrodynamic waves and some kinds of instabilities also so this is uh, my recent article which is published today in the denik bhaskar popular newspaper so india is also going to launch the aditya l1 mission and the aim of aditya l1 mission is similar to the nasa project that is parker solar probe that will study the outermost layer or that is corona and solar wind that is the property of the sun what is the reason for the propagation of mhd wave there what are the alfin waves there and how they propagate what kind of instabilities so in a very simple manner i try to 
रिटर्न इट इन हिंदी लैंग्वेज सो दिस एम एच डी हेज सम काइंड ऑफ अप्रोक्सीमेशन वेन एवर वी वी इंक्लूड आर वी कंसिडर द एम एच डी थ्योरी इन द प्लाज्मा सो यू शुड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर अबाउट द स्केल लेंथ एंड इट शुड बी नोटेड दैट द स्केल लेंथ ऑफ दिस एम एच डी इज कंसिडर्ड एट द ग्लोबल लेवल सो वी कंसिडर मेनली द ग्लोबल प्लाज्मा पैरामीटर्स हियर दैट इज वी टॉक अबाउट द density bulk density or pressure or velocity and uh, it deals with the low frequency and long wavelength regime and since we are talking at the global scale level so that's why the characteristic length scale that is the size of the plasma is very very large as compared to the iron larmer radius and mean free path similarly the characteristic time scale is also larger than the iron gyro radius and mean free path time so this uh, mhd generally whenever we include the maxwell equation in the hydrodynamic fluid equation so we ignore the displacement uh, term here because we are talking about the low frequency waves so the displacement equation is uh, ignored there and the plasma is considered to be fully ionized but this is not limited one we can extend this mhd theory for the case of non ideal plasma also when there is a, some kind of finite resistivity is there in the system so under some limitations this mhd theory is also used for those kind of systems and with these assumptions if we see here there is a important parameter which is called the beta plasma parameter that is nothing here which is the ratio of the two pressure one due to the plasma pressure p and second is the magnetic pressure so this beta parameter basically classify the various plasma ranging from space to laboratory plasma so when beta parameter is very small so that is this plasma pressure is less than the magnetic pressure so then in that case we consider that is a low beta plasma that exists in the solar corona so in the solar corona basically there is a high magnetic field so because of the high magnetic field that magnetic pressure is very very high but in the case of solar wind that is the wind which is coming out from the solar corona that is propagating in the interstellar space it is a comparatively weak magnetic field so that the magnetic pressure becomes small as compared to the plasma pressure and hence it is categorized in, into the high beta plasma so the solar interior property generally we consider in a high beta plasma but there are some intermediate zone where these two pressure they balance together and in the solar chromosphere or in the planetary nebula or in solar wind or in some laboratory experiment we consider a beta plasma with almost plasma pressure equivalent to the magnetic pressure so how to include the resistive effects in mhd is very important as we know in the conducting media we have the generalized ohms law j is equals to sigma e and when there is a both electric magnetic field so that is become j is equals to sigma e plus v cross b so in the fully ionized plasma when there is a infinite conductivity that is the resistivity becomes zero so the right hand side term becomes zero here but when there is a some kind of finite resistivity here eta so that right hand side term is not zero and the generalized ohms law becomes here e plus v cross b equals to eta j and when we replace this j current density into the ampere's law so finally we get this induction equation here that is curl of b is equals to curl of b uh, partial b by partial t is equals to curl of v cross b plus eta by mu not delta square b so in these equation we have two effects the in the right hand side the first one shows here the convection effect that is the motion of the fluid or plasma and second is here the opposing or resistive effect that is called the diffusion term here so these two terms if we see dimensionally so they can be written in terms of the some kind of uh, uh, dimensionless number so the dimensionally if we check that so the dimension of the first convection term is vv by l and the dimension of this diffusion term is this one so their ratio is called here the magnetic renold number and if this magnetic renold number is low that is the flow term is very small as compared to the diffusion term so that there will be resistive effect dominates here so the diffusion term second one here this term will be dominating and we neglect the convection term basically and in the high magnetic renold number case if you see here the convection term is dominating and we ignore this eta term that is diffusion one so this uh, maxwell's equation with resistive effects we include in the mhd model 
But what about the other fluid equation in the plasma? So they are derived from the Boltzmann equation. That Boltzmann equation basically uh, tell about the kinetic properties of the plasma particles for which we consider a distribution function f in the position velocity time space and that is this one which includes here the collision term also. And in the collisionless plasma when the right hand side that is called the Crookes term here so if that is neglected so it becomes a Vlasov equation and then finally we solve mathematically and we find the uh, different moments of these equation which gives basically the momentum transfer equation, the continuity equation and equation of state. So it is uh, given in the book FF chain where you can derive that. So taking the volume, taking the integral over dv of this equation gives the first moment that is the continuity equation and by multiplying the momentum and integrating over the velocity space so we get the momentum transfer equation and finally we get the equation of state multiplying by half in vv. So these three equations are the fluid equations which represent the hydrodynamic property of the fluid and adding this Maxwell equation we have a complete set of equations which is called the MHD fluid equations. So with this equation we generally study the wave propagation in a conducting plasma and there are two kinds of MHD wave. So likewise in air or ordinary fluid media we have seen the propagation of the acoustic waves. So similarly in the plasma medium there is a propagation of alfin waves. So these alfin waves basically they propagate parallel to the direction of the magnetic field but in nature they are transverse. There are formation of the trough and crust continuously here. So there is a characteristic wave propagation because of the tension which is produced here due to this magnetic pressure that is B square by mu naught. So the ratio of this tension and density the square root is given that is called the Alfin wave velocity. So this is the uh, first wave that is propagated due to the uh, tension magnetic tension here and uh, the restoring force is basically produced due to the magnetic tension here. But the second type of wave that is called the fast and slow magnetosonic wave that always propagate perpendicular to magnetic field but in nature it is longitudinal. So that is there is a continuously formation of rare fraction and compression. So there is a propagation of a magnetosonic wave. So what is the new thing here that in addition to the alfin velocity there is also coupling of the acoustic speed because it is in nature longitudinal wave. So here both the plasma pressure and magnetic pressure when they couple so the total pressure becomes here this one and this gives finally the characteristic speed that is called the magnetosonic speed. So here the restoring force is due to both the magnetic pressure as well as the plasma pressure and it can be also written in terms of the beta parameter so where beta parameter may play some significant role here. So now when these waves which are periodically uh, propagating in a medium so due to some kind of excess energy they turn into the instabilities. So we generally observe these instabilities in the plasma confinement or in astrophysical system and they are classified on three categories. So first is the uh, technique that is magnetic confinement by which we control these instability in the laboratory systems. Second is the inertial confinement that is again a fusion reactor which is based upon the plasma produced due to high intensity laser and third one is the gravitational uh, collapse that is the natural one because of the huge gravity of any astrophysical object because of their self gravitation the plasma is controlled there. So in these three techniques basically in the uh, this uh, magnetic confinement technique if you see this thing how to go big. is going forward. No, no, it is not working. Can you check it? No. Go to that slide. So basically these instabilities we generally discuss in the laboratory and astrophysical systems. Go back, go back. Go back.
yes okay so the idea of instability is very simple when we discuss the uh, position of any object in this type of structure so you can see here that this ball will be always stable here and uh, this is a kind of neutral arrangement but here there is a completely unstable arrangement that is due to some kind of free energy source or force this ball will become completely unstable here and this type of arrangement is conditionally stable here that depends upon the force or the restoring force that is applying to it so these instabilities we discuss in two type two types that is macro instability that is studied using the fluid description where the length scale is considered at the macroscopic level that is for the large scale size plasma we consider this and that affect globally here and global plasma parameters are taken but in the micro instability we talk at the particle level and that's why we use the kinetic theory so these are few instabilities which is most popular in space and laboratory plasma that is kelvin helmholtz instability which is one of the famous hydrodynamic instability which produces due to do uh, two uh, kind the first one is that when there is a when there are two superposed fluids which are separated by a horizontal boundary so at their interface due to the relative motion there is a development of kh instability and the second uh, reason is that here when there is a sufficient velocity gradient that is velocity shear so because of that velocity shear the kh instability can be also produced so these are some application of the kh instabilities and uh, according to chandrashekhar we get the condition of kh instability which is occurred for all the perturbation wave number which are larger than this minimum wave number and that is in terms of the density ratio of two fluids and the relative velocity between the fluids so this uh, kelvin helmholtz instability is uh, observed in uh, various uh, space and astrophysical system for example if you see the saturn ring so in the saturn ring there is a this vertex structure formation that is nothing but the kh instability or if you see the air cloud superposition here so sometimes we see in the sky this type of structure or in the interaction between sea water and air there is also formation of kh instability and in the laboratory case in tokamak fusion reactor this kh instabilities are also observed the next uh, uh, hydrodynamic instability is the uh, relatelar instability which is produced due to the density difference between two fluid when heavy fluid is supported by the light one under the influence of gravity so there is a formation of here bubbles and spikes here these are the relatelar structures so these are few examples of relatelar structure in the space and laboratory or fluid dynamics cases you can see but this rele bernard convection is uh, very very important that is uh, that is the case of relatelar instability in which we can discuss the density gradient produced relatelar instability so according to the analytical expression we can get the growth rate here so this rele bernard is a important Uh, uh instability or convection phenomena when a, when two fluids are there and when the lower fluid is heated that is the fluid is heated from below so because of the convection uh, because of the convection the cold fluid comes down due to the gravity so when there is a temperature difference so because of that temperature difference the convection phenomena occurs here and when this temperature is very very small so there is no any convection motion but when temperature difference is large so the convective motion occurs here so basically in fluid there are two types of uh, dissipation force that is the diffusion due to the heat and viscous friction so these two make a a, a number that is called rele number here and we get this rele number expression according to this equation number 13 where if rele number is larger than a typical number that is 1708 for two fluids then we get the relative rele bernard convection here so that depends upon various parameters like the density of the fluids or gravity or the expansion uh, factor or the diffusivity everything here so these are the theoretical equations by which we can study the rele bernard convection and this last one is the gravitational gene instability that is observed in the star formation process or in the sun so in sun we have two types of pressure that is the thermal pressure and force due to gravity and both are in the opposite direction so the 
thermal pressure is actually working in the outward direction but the gravity is working in the inward direction so when the gravity dominates over the thermal pressure then there is a one instability trigger that is called the gravitational instability and that is responsible for the fragmentation of molecular cloud by which star is formed basically but in equilibrium as our sun is in hydrostatic equilibrium where both the force due to the gas pressure is balanced by the force due to gravity so we have a hydrostatic equilibrium system that is our sun and chandrashekhar has derived the famous uh, formula for this instability which is observed in a system so for all perturbation wave number which are less than this number then this gravitational instability will be observed so various uh, astrophysical system we can consider like galaxy galaxy cluster stars molecular cloud where there is a huge significance of the gravitational instability and this can be studied using the linear analysis if we are discussing the linear instability considering the first order perturbation and that perturbation is of plane wave type so we can find out the roots of a polynomial equation and then stability instability uh, we can discuss here but for the non linear solution we consider basically the kurtwig d varies type of equations which are non linear in general and we can analyze the instabilities so this is just uh, two slides i think so uh, we have just tried to apply the our results in order to study the star formation from a molecular cloud so molecular cloud is considered to be the galaxy or nursery where the star formation takes place which is a very small temperature initially but due to the gravitational contraction the temperature continuously increases and that achieve up to 10 power 6 kelvin which is the required condition for the formation of plasma and density is very very high here so that when all the physical conditions are achieved here so from the molecular cloud we have the collapse process take place here and in equilibrium we get the regular star like this and then finally we have the various other stages of the star formation these are the fundamental equations and we get the dispersion relation and from this dispersion relation we get the chandrashekhar instability criteria and these are few fundamental parameters which are calculated for the h2 region of molecular cloud where we get important here the length scale of the uh, molecular cloud is comparable to the jeans wavelength that is 171.76 parsec so that is our considered theory is here successfully applied in order to understand the star formation in molecular clouds so there are other kinds of waves and instability studied in various fields that is my interesting research area so finally the waves and instabilities are the unique phenomena which are discussed in hydrodynamic or hydromagnetic or any kind of fluid mechanical systems and these are basically responsible for the energy transfer in the interstellar space and this instability play a very prominent role in the structure formation like star formation from molecular cloud and in the laboratory plasma so finally i am thankful to professor g s diman for giving me this opportunity and to deliver a invited talk here so thank you very much if you have any question please feel free to ask if there are any questions so let's give a big hand to professor for the talk please love my talk very warmly i thank our invited speaker professor ram prasad prajapati for such insightful and wonderful talk i hope it would really help the young minds and i also thanks professor rg shandal for chairing this session now i request the chairman of the department professor jyoti prakash to felicitate the invited speaker for this session with token of love
okay uh, now we will move towards uh, in the guest hpu guest house for lunch i request you all to move towards the hpu guest house for lunch uh, we will start our next session after lunch thank you so much
पीछे रखती है चौदह साल हो गई स्टेज पे नहीं
tickling.
professor sharmri shukla for the invited talk on the topic a multi level modeling for describing growth in every childhood and uh, this session will be chaired by professor ap sharma and it is my privilege to introduce our session chair professor ap sharma professor ap sharma has served the department of mathematics and statistics himachal pradesh university shimla from 1992 to 2021 He is PhD from Ramanujan Institute for Advanced Study in Mathematics, University of Madras, and received many prestigious fellowships from national and international organizations, including visiting fellowship from Punjab University, Chandigarh, postdoctoral fellowship from NVHM, Commonwealth Fellowship, Hungarian Fellowship. Uh, and in hungary he worked with professor gabriela bohan insa fellowship to work at aisar mohali he was deputy coordinator of sap drs level 1 ugc from 2009 to 2014 and coordinator for sap drs level 2 ugc 2014 to 2019 he has traveled widely in the country as well as abroad and delivered many invited talks he published about 30, 70 research papers in international journals of repute such as communications in algebra contemporary mathematics arabian journal of mathematics presently he is also an editor of asian european journal of mathematics but since now i request professor ap sharma to formally introduce professor sharri shukla our invited speaker and chair the session thank you very much madam so it is my pleasure to introduce the renowned professor of statistics professor sharvari shukla she is director and professor at symbiosis statistical institute a leading institute situated at pune india she is well regarded global influencers and has been named among most influencing statisticians in her domain her efforts in popularizing bio statistics have drawn recognition for indian industry and academia she has been conferred with many prestigious fellowships and awards few to name here young researcher award eu fp7 uk international epidemiological association award for again young epidemiologist uk again third also in younger age itself developmental origins of health and disease award for young researcher of developing country toronto canada so <coughs> she has also been a recipient of who scholarship for international epidemiology and who scholarship for health and demographic surveillance system and longitudinal data analysis at dhaka bangladesh she has published uh, more than 65 paper in report in many reputed journals and she has experience in her field working in her field more than 20 years that is statistics and data analysis in healthcare so uh, she is uh, uh, i i feel that brought up in pune itself and studied at pune hold a bachelor degree in science 
and earn master degree with specialization in biostatistics from Pune University and uh, awarded doctoral degree for her contribution in the field of medical statistics. Uh, I don't have information university Pune madam? UK. UK. It's, it's not here. So from UK. Her interest in translating research into practice led her to undergo training in <coughs> epidemiological and clinical trials. So Madam is more related to bio and medical statistics. So it is our uh, all that we are proud that uh, we have your lecture here today, Madam, on multi-level modeling for describing growth in early childhood. Maybe this is also related to some bio and medical field. So I request uh, Madam to please uh, start her lecture. So very good afternoon to each one of you. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, introducing me in very systematic way. Uh, because sometimes I feel that it is required when you are meeting new people and uh, younger generations. Uh, so that uh, if you are interested in applied statistics domain, uh, you can definitely uh, connect with me. Um, so I have provided my email address also. So if required, you can connect with me and uh, we can have some commonalities uh, doing some kind of research. So with this, uh, I must thank the organizer uh, and the um, hospitality which they have provided from yesterday. I mean, I'm feel, feeling really blessed uh, with lot of temples and lot of, uh, you know, good people around. I feel very happy and uh, honored. Uh, so let me uh, start with my uh, discussion. So I again feel that this is more of a discussion than the delivering the session. Uh, so if you can also participate uh, with uh, this kind of discussion. So I will be basically talking about the multi-level modeling for describing growth in early childhood. Uh, so uh, as sir has mentioned, we do have a couple of uh, research projects going on uh, at Symbiosis Statistical Institute. And this particular uh, presentation or the discussion which we are going to have is basically funded by the uh, ministry. So it is funded by uh, DST uh, EDI CPS program and uh, they have very generously funded us uh, for doing this particular uh, project. Uh, so moving on, uh, I think I should be grateful to the um, earlier speakers, both the speakers in fact. Uh, because they have set the tone of the discussion and I could see a lot of mathematics around. Okay. Nonetheless, uh, I work in applied statistics. I try to simplify the slides uh, so that uh, all of us will be able to understand, including you and me. Right. So, um, nonetheless, that setting up the tone is required for the speaker like me and especially when I am discussing the things with you after the lunch. Okay. Uh, so let us take it ahead. Uh, I will be basically talking about the growth and when I am talking about the growth, growth means our growth in the body size parameters. Because I come from the medical statistics, uh, I do have speciality in epigenetic epidemiology. So I thought that let us explore this field and uh, maybe some of you might be interested in taking this kind of work ahead. So when I am talking about the human growth, human growth in the sense of the, you know, um, increase, increase in the body size parameter. So when it comes to body size parameters, we do normally measure as soon as you get birth, you know, your doctor measure your head circumference and length. You can still go back to your, you know, files of delivery. You will find these kind of readings in your medical file. Okay. However, and then they uh, they even measure the mid arm circumference, then weight of the baby and things like this. Nonetheless, here, so there are so many parameters which one can measure, body size parameter, including the height. 
and why to measure because these body parameters are related to sum of the outcome and if I relate it to the sum of the outcome related to the health then you will find that there are so many things which you and me uh, must be knowing like if you are really short that means you carry more risk for getting diabetes if you are really short in legs then you do have more risk of getting diabetes or if you are diabetic then your next generation will get diabetes that is they are more at risk something like this okay nonetheless i am not medical person i work in medical statistics that means i analyze the data coming from the medical statistics uh, medical field so when i will be talking about growth that growth is related to the height and weight right now to simplify the idea because understanding medical term plus statistics will be too much so right now my focus will be only on height and weight so human growth and development are characterized and defined by the way in which we change in size shape and maturity at age so age is very important whenever we are considering the growth right and especially that growth when you are talking about the childhood then definitely we need to account for the age okay so the human growth process involves the growing of different body parts at different growth rates at different time points so here all the words are important here i am talking about the growth rates okay and even duration so child at one year child at two year definitely their growth and the uh, you know increase in the growth parameters are different so i always uh, get fascinated with age sort of variable for statistician okay uh, but age as a parameter because um, we feel that uh, you know i mean age is linear right there is no reverse and age plays a lot of role uh, when it comes to the analyzing the data uh, so i work in applied statistics is not like um, prajapati sir or earlier speaker uh, where data is coming and uh, there is not commercial approach in the data uh, here there is a lot of you know uh, confidentiality and uh, uh, you know security of the data which we need to follow when you are handling the, uh, data coming from the humans uh, so i always feel that this is really very remarkable phenomenon when it comes to the human growth so to determine the growth and assess the health of the children their body size parameters like i mentioned height and weight are major over a period of time so only considering the height and weight at birth will not serve the purpose if you wish to predict how children are going to grow okay so uh, by employing the longitudinal data so those who work in uh, you know in uh, primary data they must be knowing uh, that longitudinal data means is collected uh, collection of repeated observations on same subjects or the patients uh, i even work in a clinical trial so uh, sometimes we do ex interchange the terminology like subjects and the patients which you all must be knowing about so here uh, let me give you the example say for example some patient is admitted in the hospital and so many times nurses come and measure the blood pressure okay on same individual so frequently that means that data becomes longitudinal data here likewise we have measured some of the observations related to height and weight okay uh, for the modeling of human growth curves researcher can describe summarize visualize and predict and interpret the features of the growth pattern so how one is going to grow that we can predict looking at the historical data so moving forward somebody will say why only look at the growth right so all of you will agree with me we are sitting in the hot country where we are going to be the capital of diabetes right so in the era of obesity epidemic in children uh, characterizing childhood trajectories is becoming more important for many reasons and especially in clinical practice it has got its own importance so studying of growth traje trajectories may allow more accurate identification and quantification of modifiable risk factors so if we come to know that okay this child is going to grow at a certain rate okay where he is going to be uh, getting lot of obesity after certain age then 
we can we can have those as the you know window period for doing some kind of intervention that is what here i wish to convey so characterization of trajectories may also help to identify critical windows during which the intervention may be especially useful say especially when women do have the diabetes during pregnancy then uh, clinically people do suggest uh, and clinician do suggest to do a rigorous follow up something like this so we can do some kind of intervention at early age and we can save the children for getting obese unnecessarily okay so there are lot of clinical reasons uh, you can uh, you can just check that what are the uh, you know uh, leading risk factors for diabetes and i think now diabetes is so common that i even don't need to uh, you know explain you about the diabetes and for that matter non communicable diseases so in addition to the genetics several prenatal factors such as gestational diabetes that means diabetes which appears or which comes for the girls during pregnancy only in ideal scenario after 6 months actually speaking those girls should get normal glucose okay however in india it's really very very pathetic situation that after getting the delivery after 6 months of delivery they should actually bring their glucose to the normal but they are getting converted into type 2 diabetes and that is really worrisome for the generations to come uh, so that is again one more uh, you know uh, leading factor <coughs> they and the postnatal factors like early feeding have the impact on the later growth so there is a very famous hypothesis called barker hypothesis on which we are working as sir has mentioned in the introduction we are working on the fetal origin hypothesis um where we are looking at the health outcomes so early growth patterns are associated with later health outcomes for etiology or potentially for the risk stratification so that means we are relating all this growth whatever is happening okay at early childhood we are relating it to the some kind of outcome and that outcome can be any health outcome especially the non communicable diseases so somebody will say why to study growth what questions we are supposed to answer out of doing all these kind of exercises after getting huge funding from the ministry right so then one can think and one can uh, and you all will agree with me that uh, you can have this kind of questions in your mind what causes the patterns of growth how different are they for different people say for example if you compare you know for that matter if you compare the state wise or if you compare the country wise okay you can see i mean south east asians are very different compared to the white caucasian people and that itself is the alarming thing for all of us then uh, can we put these people into categories what are the patterns dif- uh, patterns different for different people in different categories uh, can we identify the uh, inflection points to discover these kind of drivers so there are n number of uh, you know n number of questions which we can actually ask for the data however there are still controversies exist like in all research which is healthy thing okay uh, whether the fetal weight gain curves should be customized or not we do have lot of uh, you know uh, research going on in this area so to be very honest what is the current practice let us understand that first so that we will be able to relate our own idea to the health outcome so after birth late or the height and weight surveillance is the cornerstone of well child disease a visible record for both clinicians and parents so as soon as you get delivered okay as soon as you born what your mother and father does is they will take you to visit clinician very frequently and then accordingly your uh, all uh, immunization and all these things will be planned okay why they are visiting clinicians they wish to see whether your growth is happening as per the expectation sort of expected curve or not then your clinician will check your height and weight okay especially the pediatrician and then looking at the growth curve they will tell your mother or father stating that whether the child uh, growth of the child is normal or abnormal 
sometimes all mothers they feel that their child eat very less then pediatrician will say no 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 his growth is fine don't feed him more his growth is happening uh, you know uh, normally so crossing percentile lines downward in a traditional is a traditional signal of the failure to try to thrive that means sometimes you know you are below the some percentile sometimes your growth is above the certain percentile so in the era of obesity upward crossing gets more attention because as i mentioned if you look at your own sort of uh, you know uh, height and weight or obesity for that matter and if you compare your obesity with your earlier generations you all will agree with me it is very very obvious and you can actually see it by your eyes right so uh, we are sitting in the era of obesity which leads to the diabetes in fact um, we are the one who has uh, you know who has contributed towards the finding out some genes which causes the diabetes and it was really very you know a very very appreciable sort of research which i published in the nature uh, journal so what happens in the in this particular era upward crossing gets more attention earlier we used to have the undernourished children right now simultaneously we also do have the over nutrition and obesity so lot of eyes are getting now above the 5 percentile so if you are growing 95 percentile and above then you are in that zone so pediatricians are interested what underlies the variation between children in linear and the adiposity growth so i hope all of you are aware about this kind of growth charts i am very sure uh, young young students uh if not then you go back to your clinical files okay you will find all these charts in your clinical file where based on these charts you have been categorized whether your growth is normal or abnormal body size wise i am not talking about mental health okay so uh, these are the charts uh, developed by uh, you know uh, by um, pediatrician group of pediatricians in 2015 uh we also do have the uh, you know um, uh, nchs charts uh, where people have contributed but there are lot of challenges what are those challenges basically what data they have collected uh, so earlier we used to follow all american standards that's first thing okay and looking at the american standards about their height and weight okay we are pediatrician used to label us normal abnormal whatever okay then so many scientists objected this kind of you know thinking then later on people came together and they tried and developed their own sort of cutoffs which are basically applicable to the indian uh, population okay or indian children you can say however those sort of uh, uh, growth charts which has been developed and which are widely used they are not basically based on the longitudinal data say for example one group is there who do have some reading related to the uh, one year child another group might be having some reading related to uh, child at two a two year something like this when it comes to this kind of growth charts we have to follow one person for certain duration of time then only you can say that how person is growing right that's the reason we need to have the longitudinal study to concretely come up with the um, so it is kind of growth charts uh, so whatever growth charts currently we are using that is where people have used the cross sectional data okay that means only once they have collected height and weight of all the children whoever were available okay and they have developed the growth charts however those growth charts are again little bit misleading and that's the reason we feel that we must contribute so to understand and predict the growth that means especially stunting and obesity of the child by using the body size parameter to estimate their age at peak velocity and uh, peak velocity uh, using the superimposition by translation and rotation model that means it is sitar model to create the integrated uh, uh, integrated ready to use data to infer determinants of growth tra trajectories and uh, here objective is to develop pre develop predictive applications to complement available growth charts by using the annual health data to construct models for stunting and obesity 
so because i have given you the background so you might have realized that one you have to follow one person for certain duration of time it's very very challenging right and in india there are very uh, few cohort studies uh, which uh, we deal with uh, and one of the famous study is pune maternal nutrition study if you are interested you must uh, you know you must uh, visit this pune maternal nutrition study where they have actually followed up the children right from their birth now the third generation follow up is going on so they are now almost 26 years old similarly uh, at symbiosis we have followed up the children from 5 year to 15 years so i am blessed that uh, uh, in my life i got all primary data to handle so this is again one of the example where uh, i work on the uh, real time analysis and for uh, primary data so here our children are aged from 5 to 15 years that means as soon as child becomes 5 year every year we measure their height and weight so we measure so many parameters however here my focus is only on height and weight likewise till 15 years we conduct their body size measurements so how data came in picture in symbiosis we do have the uh, you know in pune we do have the uh, primary schools okay uh, and even we do have some of the schools uh, situated at uh, nashik uh, so there are six uh, schools in pune two schools in nashik and uh, there are two more schools uh, which are again uh, in the other parts of the uh, uh, maharashtra so we started collecting the height and weight during the annual health checkup so annual health checkup is mandatory for all of us as symbiosis has the you know college similarly we also do have the schools and that has given us the opportunity to follow these children luckily uh, all credit goes to our visionary people who in the 1997 they have actually uh, started the annual health checkup not only that they have actually used the electronic health record which is blessing for the statisticians getting ready made data right uh, so this ehr software which uh, we are using from 1997 uh, which it is uh, paper presser uh, basically it is hipaa compliant software and there is lot of uh, you can see the uh, you know um, uh, here you can see the Uh, you can see this particular figure it's not that easy to you know get that kind of data so data will come in certain format then medical person will interpret it in certain ways then you know lot of processing happens data gets archived at server and then we do get data so it is not one click away to be very honest okay so uh, this is how um, data is coming in picture now whenever student comes for the annual health checkup okay so basically uh, we do have uh, school students getting enrolled at their kindergarten right till 12th standard after 12th standard they come to the they basically come to the colleges uh, so uh, at 5 years of age because they are too small we will not be able to or we will not be permitted to draw their blood Uh, however we have collected the data on general information then anthropometric parameters like height weight and bmi then if whether they do have any family history or not uh, nowadays that is equally important right uh, then uh, we have even uh, collected data on the past history and some medical examination like ent and all these things okay so so every year we do this kind of examination on these children as soon as they get enrolled so this is mandatory thing for us now as i mentioned my focus my focus is on this particular area okay nonetheless we do have so many other information available with this data and uh, interested people can actually contact me in fact we do have the uh, you know uh, iop like um, you know vision uh, vision data and things like this okay so uh, moving forward as i mentioned uh, like data is coming from some sources then we have to as a statistician or the data managers they do check uh, you know uh, do the quality checks like data nodes then quality assessment uh, and then eventually data harmonization and uh, and archival of the data 
actually happens. Uh, so those who wish to work in primary data, they need to understand the harmonization of data also because um, those schools are si situated at seven locations, right? And we have to train the clinicians how to measure height, how to measure weight, because though you feel that measuring height is very simple, but it is one of the very difficult measure to measure. Uh, so height, uh, even your own height, whoever is measuring the height, his own height also contributes um, in, the, in the measuring height of the participant. So there are so many protocols. However, we have used a very standard protocol uh, and we train all the investigators how to measure height and how to measure weight and everything was standardized. It is still standardized. What do you mean by standardization? All of all the faculty members must be knowing, but for the student, so say for example, um, if you use two weighing scale, it may happen that two weighing scale will show the different weight on two weighing scales, right? And when when you are giving some kind of services half kg here and there doesn't matter but when you are in research that half kg or even 100 gram, uh, gram uh, weight really matters so likewise we have to check the integrity and the uh, you know quality of the data so we standardize it like this like uh, on every monday one of our assistant will go with 20 kg weight okay they will put on the weighing scale that weighing scale should show 20 kg right we will record so that if reviewer asks us about the standardization we do have those kind of records likewise all our data has been standardized we train the people who collect the anthropometric uh, parameter or all the clinicians we retrain them every you know quarterly so that they should not miss the boat and we should get the quality data still some of the errors happens because we all are human beings so likewise Data harmonization takes a lot of time uh, in these kind of studies. Uh, in fact, we should be knowing that with whom we are doing follow-up, whether that child and please, please understand that whenever we are saying that, you know, annual health checkup, if I am say six years old and then if I am supposed to, you know, follow it up at seven years, I have to take the measurement, all of them will not turn up at seven years, right? Because in one day you cannot handle this kind of load which I will be showing it to you right now. So in this particular data, um, as I mentioned data is from 5 to 15 year old children and imagine how many uh, students we do have. So participants are 12,000, more than 12,000 participants here we are dealing with. That means we do have more than 2 lakhs of record. And that's the reason we got this particular grant under the big data analytics and nowadays big data analytics is really a hot topic. So of them uh, around 6,800 are boys and uh, 5,000 are girls. So that means 56% of them are boys and 44% of them are uh, you know uh, girls. After doing all these quality checks still we do have some of the missing information right. So when it comes to the height okay with height and weight data from boys and for, from girls we do have around two and a half uh, thousand uh, you know children on which we do have height and weight data available and similar uh, for boys and similarly for girls follow-up is little bit less right but however data is so big uh, that um, you know it doesn't matter uh, so this is just simply we wanted to check what is their you know average height and weight what are the counts right where they are following uh, and this slide is self-explanatory I don't need to uh, you know tell you about the mean and uh, standard deviation right so moving forward uh, if we look at their um, so on left hand side we do have the height okay um, and here we do have weight okay on x-axis we do have age okay uh, so uh, if you can see height and weight by age okay then you will clearly see that up to certain extent boys and girls are growing okay with same rate but after certain age okay boys started growing rapidly compared to the girls which you all can observe right similarly if we follow them up, right now I am showing data up to 15 years, however we do have data up to 25 years. So later on, 
boys gets you know uh, you get straight line in the growth however girl starts you know uh, bypassing the boys that is again one more peculiarity so uh, so this is how you can say this is the average height okay uh, on x axis we do have age so how height how they are growing when it comes to height by age so you can see that up to say uh, say for example up to age uh, 11 years they do have the 150 cm or say 151 cm uh, height uh, in the boys and girls but then boys starts growing height wise okay better than the girls after the 11 to 12 years of age okay uh, what happens to the weight what happens to the weight so weight gain starts you know not at 11 years or 12 years little late you know they start gaining the weight okay and again there also boys will gain the weight okay uh, earlier girls will start gaining the weight and then later on you you will see the uh, you know almost uh, you know curve here okay and then boys starts growing so they bypass they bypass girls uh, in the weight okay so this is similar uh, sort of you know uh, representation of the data when it comes to the height and weight of the boys and girls and all of you know that these are the box and whisker plots and these are the curves okay where you can see whatever growth charts you have shown uh, you have seen right at the beginning of my uh, presentation which are readily available so here we try to do the similar kind of thing okay this is fifth centile this is the average value and this is the 95th centile right so likewise we can have the height weight and we can calculate the body mass index based on the height and weight data so uh, somebody will say this is fine i mean this is on an average what is happening with the data but what about the, uh, what about the individual growth charts right and here comes the so many models okay uh, just to avoid the confusion i am not uh, going into details of the uh, you know lot of formulas but there are so many models right uh, say one model is uh, genesis model uh, where uh, it is really uh, you know um, it's really um, uh, appreciable that they do have the four parameter model uh, similarly, we also do have the REITs model. Uh, if you are more interested in building of those models, because nowadays uh, data science and big data analytics, uh, you must be knowing, uh, you know, all these machine learning techniques. Uh, so again, REITs model is uh, one more model which is quite frequently used, uh, and it is again a four parameter model. Then uh, there is a Sitar model, as I mentioned you. Uh, that sitar model is uh, you know we have tried all these models and then we feel that sitar model is the uh, you know uh, sitar model is best fit uh, so team call uh, in 210 proposed this method known as the superimposition of translation and rotation model so which involves each individual having a growth curve that is a shift uh, that is shifted and the transform version of the mean growth curve so earlier we have seen only average right but sitar model will give you the little bit more opportunity to check about the individual height and growth curve so important strength of the sitar is that it summarizes the individual growth relative to the average trajectory in three key parameters that is size tempo and velocity so that is really required for the clinical point of view also to understand what is the size by which we are growing what is the tempo by which growth is happening and what is the velocity rate at which we are growing okay then shifting of the curve up and down okay corresponding to the mean changes or shifting it to the left or right correspond to the different growth times and the transformation of the curve is really looking into by this um, sitar model and this is the actual formula of the uh, sitar model this is how team cole has uh, developed so i closely work with uh, team cole for building of this kind of uh, models uh, so in general this sitar method of uh, growth curve analysis summarizes each individual growth curve reflecting their size that means whether we are tall or short whether we are heavy or light 
as compared to the others from that particular cohort. Another important, uh, important uh, thing is it also gives us the growth tempo. That means whether we are relatively mature or delayed in the timing of growth. Okay. So that is one more parameter which is required to uh, look into when it comes to the growth. And third and important parameter is velocity. That means how fast we are growing compared to the others. Okay. Suddenly, uh, I mean, you can see the average height of Indian men, average height of Indian girls, right? And suddenly, if you could see very tall fellow, your eyes, you know, blinks and you will see what's happening with that particular fellow. Suddenly, if we see too short person, then also you start thinking, right? So, uh, all these things are getting, uh, you know, getting contributed while developing the sitar model. So, this model explains all of the variability in growth between individuals so that their size, tempo and velocity can be viewed as a complete summary of the growth pattern. So, sitar also estimates a smooth average growth curve against which each individual growth can be compared. Okay. So, these are the some of the important things related to the sitar model. Nonetheless, uh, I have given you the reference in my earlier slide. If you can uh, check the team poll. Uh, and the growth model, you will get all the uh, models related to the growth and all the mathematical, um, you know, um, calculation behind these models. Uh, so, moving forward, these are the individual height and weight uh, curves by gender. Like uh, in my earlier slide, you have seen the average height, average weight and how boys and girls are, you know, uh, behaving differently after certain age, right? Here it is the individual uh, height and weight, though this graph looks very simple, but it takes more than six months to plot this kind of gra uh, graphs after building up the sitar model. Uh, so here we have included all those 10,000 or say uh, <coughs> boys and girls. Okay, so first graph is related to the height of the boys and girls. Second graph so or second row is related to the uh, weight of the boys and weight of the girls. So on x-axis again we do have the age because everything is happening by by age, right? So likewise you can see whatever I was talking about the you know uh, growth of the on an average here you can see the band like how they start growing okay after certain age whether it is early whether some of them start you know growing little late and things like this. It's very, very fascinating sort of thing uh, to understand how we are going to grow, right, uh, when uh, you are at childhood. Similarly, these are the, uh, you know, here I have additionally uh, included the BMI because BMI is of more interest because body mass index leads to the, which is again one of the major for the obesity. Uh, so, people normally look at the body mass index, uh, however, for me, height is the major uh, skeletal right, uh, reading, so my focus is more on the height. So, uh, just to summarize, okay, uh, these are the uh, size, tempo and velocity of the, uh, by the, by means of the sitar model, okay, uh, in the weight and height of the boys and girls. Okay, and when I, uh, when, uh, and you should be looking at the size, tempo and velocity, okay, uh, especially in the boys and girls. So, uh, when, uh, if I could conclude based on this earlier, uh, you know, earlier chart, okay, these are the charts, or uh, if I can conclude based on this particular, uh, you know, um, summary of the sitar model. Then it shows us that mean age at peak height velocity for boys, okay, is 13 or say 14 years, whereas mean age at peak height velocity is 11 years for girls. When you look at the mean weight velocity, it is again 13 years and 10 years for the boys and girls. What is happening with the, uh, you know, height velocity and weight velocity? So, when it comes to the boys, for boys, it is 6.3 centimeter per year for boys and 8.61 centimeter for girls, okay, for the height. And for the weight, it is 4.2 kg per year for, for boys and around same like 4.5 kg for the girls. 
However, mean age at BMI velocity is 5.24 years for boys and girls. So individual and combined models for height and weight and BMI showed more than 90% of the variance. That means this particular model is fitting really you know good for this particular data. So fitting separate sitar model for body size parameters <coughs> confirms that sitar's good fit and highlights the spectrum of growth patterns. So sitar seems to be uh, you know working well to understand the growth patterns among the children uh, between the uh, 5 to um, 15 years of age. <coughs> As I told you that all this uh, work has been funded by Department of Science and Technology. Uh, so we have even uploaded all these growth curves and related information on the PHIP platform that is public health information uh, platform uh, which is with CSIO. Okay. For more details maybe you can uh, actually check this particular uh, website. So there were three groups. Okay. However, uh, we, we were contributing in mother and child. There is another group. Uh, who is contributing in non-communicable diseases and things like this. Okay, uh, so with this, uh, let me conclude that um, as you know that in symbiosis we are sitting in Pune and in Pune uh, or uh, from our students we know that they are from affiliate family, they are all from urban area. Uh, however, we need to have, we need to check about the generalizability, right? So we need to have the rural data. Okay, I will be more than happy if Himachal, uh, uh, you know, Himachal uh, people also do have this kind of data, then we can ag again compare, you know, state wise and things like this about the model. So, looking at the rural data, we can talk about the generalizability. However, this model is fitting perfectly fine for the urban children, that is what we feel. Uh, then uh, we will be uh, again working on the BMI model, then specific pattern analysis like whether you are, whether there are certain clusters like early and fast, late and slow growth happening in the, this kind of uh, children that we can uh, actually, uh, you know, check. And uh, definitely I would like to, so all these things are available um, because I analyze the data in our software. So all these codes are available if you wish to, you know, shake the hands and collaborate. Uh, then uh, going forward, uh, we will be associating all these growth, whether, so we will be having the clusters, some of them are growing fast in both ways, okay, some are faster and the late, okay, something like this, so we can have the four or six clusters and then we will be associating their growth with their, um, you know, with their some kind of health outcome and that health outcome can be, you know, in the form of say higher glucose level or something like this. So uh, with this, uh, I would like to, uh, you know, I would like to thank the, uh, you know, funding agency. Uh, these are all the collaborators. Uh, some of them are uh, even from the, uh, you know, uh, all of them are even uh, from the uh, central universities or the Institute of Importance, right? Uh, so with this, let me uh, again thank all of you. Uh, if you are more keen in understanding more about these kind of things, then uh, I feel that um, uh, curiosity and perseverance really matters if you wish to take this kind of, uh, you know, uh, things ahead. Uh, if you are more keen about understanding about science, how it works, then uh, Romanticism in Science is the book which you may explore, okay. Uh, with this, uh, let me stop. If you do have certain query or questions, okay, we also do conduct statistics clinic for a group of people. Uh, so uh, these are the uh, this is the website where you can actually uh, you know check all our work related to the project. Uh, so with this, uh, uh, let me stop here. I thank each one of you and especially the organizer, the manager, uh, for inviting me to deliver this particular uh, work to share some of the interesting findings. I don't know whether you get interested in uh, you got interested in it or not. But uh, to be very honest, this is unique work, okay, uh, where we do have this kind of, you know, follow up um, going on, right. And there are very few studies, if you wish to, if any one of you, any professor wish to, you know, form some kind of cohort uh, in Himachal, then uh, uh, I can come forward and I can definitely help you out because uh, 
uh, I do have 20 odd years of experience in handling the cohort studies and that's the reason I, I work on the longitudinal data. Uh, so I, I repeat, I am blessed with all primary data with me as a statistician. Uh, so I hardly downloaded the data from Kaggle and you know built it the built up the model and things like this. Uh, so that is luxury according to me. So thank you so much. really nice and interesting questions same questions i also do have <laughs> okay so uh, so first thing is uh, uh, though we feel that weight is more important trust me height is more important okay because if you could see uh, which is dependent on what because we have to always talk about the dependent and independent variables so is height dependent on weight or weight dependent on height right Age to wo to hota rahega because it is linear. However, there are only two skeletal major and that's the reason, you know, if you open your delivery file, you will find the head circumference measured by the clinicians. I don't know how many of them know that way, why they are measuring head circumference, right? Similarly, they measure length. When you are too small, you cannot ask them to stand. So, they measure the, uh, you know, length of the child. So these are the only two skeletal measures which we do have. One is head circumference and another one is the height. So these skeletal measures are more important, right? And all our physique is dependent on that skeletal measure. And there are a lot of hypotheses like caudal diminution and things like this because I work in medical statistics. So uh, coming back to your question. Uh, so um, to be very honest, uh, we need to do the regular follow-up. And that's really required. Like in symbiosis, symbiosis is health promoting university and we encourage all the staff members and the student. It is mandatory for all of us. In fact, you will not believe uh, our performance appraisal doesn't happen if we don't do the annual health checkup. Okay, so they, that is very beautifully they have linked it with this kind of measure so that you know all of us should be fit and fine uh, for doing good work, right? So uh, what I could see is though I am not the medical professional but uh, doing the regular you know uh, checkup on, on your birthday you can visit your doctor and uh, you know get yourself checked and another thing is uh, physical activity. Um, so lifestyle modification there are a lot of uh, you know interesting hypotheses like if you are and that is what I was mentioning in between but in the interest of time uh, I thought that I should not be explaining you I work on the Barker's hypothesis say for example if you are born small like in India we do get low birth weight babies so if you are born small okay and suddenly if you are growing okay at a faster rate then it's a lot of you know you will be having u-shaped distribution okay so born small and grown big are really very very problematic sort of population uh, because of so many reasons we ask them to eat then we change our lifestyle so many things happens it's not only one factor another component is environment third component is genetics so to answer your query it is not in one sort of sentence however lifestyle modification and the visiting the clinician regularly even if you are fit and fine that will serve the purpose up to certain extent this is what i could say uh, and the height, uh, we should be as per the height. Uh, if you look good, have money, 
So, uh, see, uh, in research, dissemination of the research is more important yeah. and that is where a lot of scientists, you know, they don't pay much attention for disseminating the research. Uh, it's really required, only publishing paper will not serve the purpose. Whatever work you are doing, go to the conferences, present it out of 100, 200, one person get in interested, that is your success. Similarly, from wherever you are collecting data, go back to that community, disseminate whatever is happening with them, so that it is direct or indirect your societal contribution. I feel as a statistician, we can sitting in, you know, uh, sitting in AC room with lavish chairs, we do build up these kind of models, but what is the ground reality that we must understand. And luckily, I am working with so many top clinicians uh, which are supporting me in doing this kind of, it's a teamwork, I am just presenting it. But uh, there are a lot of efforts going uh, behind collecting the data and things like this. So we are in touch with all the pediatrician especially, uh, where we have actually given this particular model, uh, we have developed one calculator. Uh, so we have given one calculator to them and uh, we ask them that you know just check whether this model is getting you know uh, getting work for your sort of patients or the uh, you know visitors and it is working fine till date. So uh, dissemination is really required so you you really need to discuss your research with like minded people like uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, ma'am. Very My informative and uh, useful lecture. And I know one person who wants to collaborate with biostatistician. He has asked me for a long time, but I could not find. So now, and the person is uh, uh, Dr. Malay Sarkar, professor and head, respiratory department, IGMC. I will be happy. To yeah, he is in there, professor and. He is a Bengali and the research is in Bengali blood on this. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, he, three, four times he has asked me, I told him that uh, in our university it is not possible, but whenever I go out and uh, I will surely find out one collabor collaborate to collaborate with you, one person. Thank you. So he will be very happy and uh, on his behalf, behalf, I invite you to collaborate with him. I will tell him, I will give his email and uh, I will take your email also to him. So. I, I have his phone number. Uh, uh, I have his phone number. I, I'll talk if possible. Uh, or they may invite again also if it is not possible this time because doctors are also some pre preoccupied. Uh, so I'll talk to him. So thank you very much. So thanks to all of you. Uh, still, if you have some query, you please come forward and uh, rightly said, madam, height is very important. You cannot change the height. I have seen the people who are very small, they are not small, they are not small, they are not small. Weight depends upon height. <laughs> height is more important. So, and... Uh, क्योंकि हाइट चेंज नहीं होती एज आई फील बड़ी मुश्किल होगी कुछ हाइट के लिए देर आर सो मेनी सप्लीमेंट्स एडवर्टीजमेंट बट आई डोंट नो बट दैट डजेंट वर्क नो सो 
ऐसे ही लटकते रहो कुछ नहीं होता ऊपर थैंक यू वेरी मच सो सो ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी एंड ऑल ऑफ अस सिटिंग हियर आई थैंक यू वेरी मच प्लीज थैंक यू सर आई थैंक अवर प्रोफेसर आपी शर्मा सर for chairing this session and now i invite pro uh, professor jyoti prakash to honor our invited speaker with short opi and moment एक सूचना है आजकल नवरात्रि भी लगे हैं और आज दुर्गा अष्टमी का दिन भी है तो हमने एक साइड सीन टूर एक छोटा सा प्लान किया है तारा देवी मंदिर का तो बाहर से भी लोग आए हैं तो एक थोड़ा सा इनका भी आउटिंग हो जाएगी थोड़ा सा संख्या का पता लग जाए कि कितने लोग अभी साढ़े पाँच बजे ना हाँ साढ़े पाँच बजे जाएंगे अभी तो एक सेशन और है टेक्निकल सेशन क्योंकि तो उसी तरह से हमने फिर गाड़ियों का प्रबंध करना है तो थोड़ा हाथ खड़ा करके थोड़ी काउंटिंग कर लो काउंट करो काउंट करो काउंट करो नहीं नहीं काउंट करो काउंट करो कितने हैं हाथ खड़ा करेंगे ऊपर हाथ तो देखते हैं कितने एक ही है पंद्रह नहीं हो रही बस फिर एक गाड़ी और एक वो तो साढ़े पाँच बजे आप लोग जो फिक्स इसी बिल्डिंग के बाहर सड़क में ना वहीं पे गाड़ी मिल जाएगी जैसे टेक्निकल सेशन खत्म होता है तो उसके बाद फिर यहाँ से जाना होगा थैंक यू Now we will move to our Department of Mathematics for technical sessions in room number four twelve and four thirty. Thank you. 